Uh, plus, you know, I've, I've, for a change, in a sense, I've gotten to play behind a very good football team who plays good offense and good defense. The good offense is reflected in Bob Chandler, whom you saw seconds ago, and Cliff Branch, whom you see now, and in Raymond Chester, the tight end. So Plunkett is using his weapons, but tonight, his team must stop another great offensive unit because Jim Zorn, the southpaw quarterback, reminds one of Fran Tarkenton in his prime. And he can hit his targets, like Sam McCullum right there, like the great Steve Largent. He knows how to make that team go. What a matchup tonight. Seattle, Washington, and it will be rocking tonight. 64,000 seats have been sold. That is capacity. And ABC's NFL Monday Night Football presents the Oakland Raiders against the Seattle Seahawks. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Dotson, who proudly presents the new Dotson Maxima for the luxury-minded who long to be Dotson-driven. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the King Dome in Seattle, Washington, the great city of the Pacific Northwest. And yes, we believe we've got a great matchup tonight. Why? Critical game, especially for the Oakland Raiders, who, as you look at the standings in the AFC West, must have a victory if they're to retain a game edge over San Diego. Denver very much alive. Seattle not very much alive, but a team good enough to have beaten Houston 26-7. A team with great offense. They can go against anybody, as we've already explained. In the meantime, what about the Oakland Raiders, winners of five in a row? This was supposed to be a year of transition. It hasn't been that. It's been a year of victory. Here's the Gifford to tell you why. Well, first of all, Howard, it really is a warm story. Jim Plunkett, he was written off a couple of years ago. A great background, Heisman Award winner, of course, Stanford in 1970. The first player drafted in 71, Rookie of the Year. Four good years with New England. And then he was traded for three number one draft picks, a two, and another football player, Tom Owen, a quarterback, to the San Francisco 49ers. He was to save that franchise. Well, the wheels came off for this young man. And he was released in 1978. Many thought he was through with football. Well, it's been a marvelous story to watch because he took over after the fifth game of the season for the Oakland Raiders this year. And as Howard already has mentioned, he has won five game and games, and he has won it in a very classy style. Oakland, one of the hottest teams in the NFL right now, and they are threatening heavily to get back into those playoffs once again. And it's been a transition year, but they have a very fine team. They brought in players, the key players here and there, and they've turned up with not only a good offensive unit, but they've come up with a tremendous defensive effort. Speaking of efforts, defensive give efforts. us an effort. Very defensive effort. I'd like to talk about Seattle just for a little while, and we might as well stay with Zorn. I think Zorn is the one guy that makes this thing go. Uh, at least that's what Oakland tells us. If they can stop Zorn, they can have a good shot here. Zorn's had good luck against them, so has Seattle. They've all played well. And asking some of the coaches, what is it that Zorn's got? They all say the first thing is quickness. He has quickness and an instinctive ability to make things happen. And he's got some guys with him like Steve Largent. One of the things about Steve Largent is he's been coached by Jerry Rome for eight straight years. So Rome's not dumb. He's going to be calling the plays tonight, too. I think we see some new things happening, some quick breaking, maybe even four receivers out there tonight at one time. Frank, are you about ready to get this thing going? Tom Flores walking the sideline. This is his second season, took over a year ago, following the heavy footsteps of John Madden. And he has his team playing a good football. Jack Patera. Came with the franchise when it began here in 1976. Got off to a super start. 
The last two seasons have been nine and seven for Jack Patera, but this year, well, it just doesn't seem to work for the Seahawks like it has in past years. They have had difficult times. They have played good football. They move the football well. But when it comes down close into the end zone, they have a difficult time getting it in. We're set to go, and this is Jesse Green, a second-year man from Tulsa, dropping deep for the Seahawks. He'll be back there with Will Lewis, number 41. And again, a sellout crowd. They love the Seahawks here in Seattle, and well, they should because they play exciting football. They do peculiar things at different times. Watch them on fourth down because they don't always kick. They don't always go for the field goal when they look like they will. Chris Barr kicks off. We're underway. Seattle will have first possession. Jesse Green from his own end zone. And he is met and met viciously at the 14-yard line. Hustling down there was number 56, Jeff Barnes. And Seattle will start deep in their own territory. Of course, their quarterback, Jim Zorn, Dan Dorning, Jim Jodat acquired this season for the Los Angeles Rams. The two wide receivers. Well, they are special, both of them. They have over 60 receptions between them. There's an offensive line that is time at times this year has failed. Young Jim Zorn, a quarterback. He has been intercepted five times only a week ago, 13 times on the season. That is not the Jim Zorn that we knew in the previous three years. First and ten, Seattle. Four and six on the season. They still think they have a chance, however. Zorn immediately to the air, and he fouls out complete to McCullum. And McCullum takes it up close to a first down, and we'll meet the defensive unit. And most of the time, they'll be in this 3-4 passing situations. They'll bring in what the man they call the bandit. As they move into a 4-3, there are your linebackers. And the man who has really made a difference defensively is Matt Millen, the rookie from Penn State, filling in for an injured Monty Johnson out for the season. Monty Jackson, uh, Jackson at the right cornerback is a question mark. He was not expected to start tonight, but he's in there playing with a chronically sore knee at right cornerback. Second down, very short yardage, getting the call, and the first down is Jim Jodat, and Jodat breaks it out to the 30-yard line, getting the first down, Burgess Owens at safety had to make the stop. There he is, Jodat, who in one game at the, against the Washington Redskins this year gained more than in his years with the Los Angeles Rams. Had 37 attempts in three years with the Rams before coming to the Seahawks, and they lost Sherman Smith early in the season. They're fine running back for the season. Joe Dot has filled in. The first down is out at the 32-yard line for Seattle. Largest split to the right for Zorn. Rolling hands off to Dorney. And the big three-year man out of Washington State over the right side gets a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be second down and eight. And defensively, you'll see all kinds of changes for the Oakland Raiders. On a passing down, they like to bring in Willie Jones, number 90, and Cedric Hardman, number 86. They move constantly. They have names for their defense, so they do not get confused. They call it out on the sidelines, and that is the unit that goes in. Second and eight. Three wide receivers. Steve Grable comes in, replacing the tight end. Grable, top of your screen, number 83. Largent, McCullum, the bottom of your screen. Second and eight, and off is Garney. Garney, not swift of foot, tries to cut back, gets to the 35, a gain of a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be third down and seven. Garney may not be swift of foot, Frank, but he's swift of mind, because as you know, he's going to medical school at night. He's an exemplary young man. Following in the footsteps of brother and dad, who are both doctors. I do find that rather interesting. I like to see that sort of stuff. A heavy load for Dornick, attending medical school at night, University of Washington. But up at the top of your screen on third down and seven is Jesse Green, the second year man out of Tulsa. McCullum and Largent to the right. And Zorn stepping back into the pile. All right. Dornick, a fine receiver, out for the first down at the 45 yard line. Rod Martin made the stop there. Zorn can drive you crazy, no question about it. They've done so far tonight. Very briefly, what they haven't been doing too well earlier, and that's protecting. That's a lovely pocket. Stay in that pocket. Zorn is, you know, is known quite a bit for his scrambling, and oftentimes that scrambling occurs when they have no place to stand. You saw the four-man front for the Oakland Raiders. They like to go into it on a passing down. The Oakland Raiders leading the entire NFL after 10 games in quarterback sacks and also interceptions. They have 37 sacks, 24 interceptions, the best in the league. On first down, Zorn. Again, McCullum is wide open. And McCullum 
spins away from Monty Jackson, taken out of bounds, down at the 28-yard line. Really put a good move on Monty Jackson that time. McCullum was wide open. Again, good protection. We'll take a look at it from the quarterback's point of view. End zone look. Steps up. Still awfully hard for me to get used to him. Turn around, throwing left at it. But you'll see Jackson is way back. Sam McCullough made a good move to the inside after he caught the ball. Picked up an extra six, seven, eight yards. And credit a good block by Jim Jodat against a blitzing Ted Hendricks. It made the play. At the 28-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. The two tight ends are in now. Sawyer 81, Bell 82. Bell in motion. Jodat, or rather Dornick. And spins inside the 25, down around the 23-yard line. Again, at three, it'll be second and seven. There are teams for teams and horses for courses. That's an old saying. <laughs> what you have to remember is that the Seahawks have not lost to the Oakland Raiders here in the Dome. Or put another way, the Raiders have not beaten the Seahawks in the Dome. It comes out the same way either way, though. But they did thrash them in Oakland three weeks ago. Second seven. Oh. Reading the defense, tries to change it off, and learn lunging offside is Lewis Bullard, the left tackle. He said, I just waited long as I could, and I had to move. That's it. A little bit of delayed count there, saw some movement in the second in the defensive setup. I think the Seahawks are expecting open. Offense number 72, yeah. ball start. He saw the same thing you did, Frank. I think they're expecting to put, get a little pressure from the defense tonight. And if they do, they may go to the four wide receiver offense. Four changes defensively for Oakland, as it is now second down and 11. And they're the four wide receivers. Single setback, go down. And you. Ted Hendricks called timeout. He said, wait a minute, that thing doesn't work. We haven't seen those four guys out here before. Yes, again, we're seeing football as it becomes more and more specialized. The Raiders caught with that four wide receiver offense by Seattle rather than risking the play. They did not have the coverage they wanted, so they called timeout. They move over to the sidelines, and you'll see different personnel when we come back to the Kingdom in Seattle with Seattle a second down and 11. Seattle, Washington, where they have sold for the season 59,000 season tickets. They held out 5,000 for each game. Those were snapped up within just a matter of hours when they were released for sale. Second down and 11 for Seattle. Again, the four wide receivers. Joe Dat single setback. And Zorn will put it up the air. And Zorn trying to time it out with Jesse Green. He was under pressure. And Otis McKinney was back there defensively for the Oakland Raiders. And Otis McKinney, a former giant, has performed admirably in the prevent defense. They call him the pirate back there when he comes in defensively, and he has moved around three interceptions for this man who formerly was a number two giant draft pick in 1978. The Oakland Raiders are like that. You could call it the reclamation franchise. Yet it's not really that, Frank, a point I'd like to develop in a moment. Third down and 11. Dornick again, single set back again, the four wide receivers, Jesse Green, McCollum, Largent, and Rabel. Dorn hangs it high. Intended for McCullum and again. Zorn fighting the pressure, gets it off. It'll be fourth down. Always interesting to see. What, did you have a point? No, no go ahead. Well, it's interesting to see when you see an unusual offensive formation how that defense tries to counter it. And what Oakland did both times when they saw the four wide end receiver was they sent two additional line, they sent two linebackers, both Hendricks and Rod Martin. So they're going to try to put pressure on Zorn. He was trying to time it out, just didn't quite have it. Efren Herrera will try a 46-yard field goal. His long of the season is 50 yards. And if this young man wanted to run for mayor in Seattle, <laughs> he would give the present mayor a contest. They love him here. On his way. And just about a half a yard short is Efren Herrera. And so it'll be first possession for the Oakland Raiders. The ball at their own 28-yard line. Efren Ahar moves over, disappointed. He has the distance. However, that was short. We'll be back with 10-24 remaining in the first quarter. It takes over for the Oakland Raiders offense. This man has generated five consecutive victories for the Oakland Raiders, taking over after the fifth game when Danny Pastorini was hurt. He has a first and 10, the ball at the 28-yard line. And 
It's off to Mark Van Egan. And Mark Van Egan over the 30, out close to the 32, a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Van Egan making his 99th consecutive appearance in an Oakland Raider uniform. They have a lot of people like that out on the wide flanks. The two receivers have 13 touchdowns between them. Bob Chandler and Cliff Branch. Gene Upshaw making his 197th consecutive start at left guard. They're big. They're huge, as a matter of fact, this Oakland Raider offensive line. Second down, seven. Branch left, Chandler right. Van Egan rolling on the right side and out over the 35, close to the 36-yard line for a pickup of four. It'll be third down and two and must meet the defensive unit of the Seattle Seahawks. A couple of youngsters in the middle. And, of course, the man that has performed so well in his rookie year, Jacob Green, a defensive left end. Linebackers, perhaps somewhat questionable, but not Michael Jackson, the second-year man who played his college football right here at the University of Washington, number 55. Third down, two. Ball at the 36-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Kenny King, the setback. And King gets the toss, hands oh, yeah. it on, gets out over the 40-yard line. Oakland first down. Well, that's the man that the Oakland organization wanted because he gives them a dimension they were sadly lacking. It gives them the outside speed you just saw. The point I wanted to make earlier, Frank, if I may, was when you, as you look at Kenny, when you talked about so many of them being reclamation projects, they are, but by design. The reclamation projects, Matusak, Hartman, Plunkett, Campbell, Owens, all first round draft choices. So they had something to begin with, and maybe there's not that much reclamation involved. Frank? They certainly have put it together. On first and ten, Plunkett hides the ball. Oh, in trouble and loses the football, and I believe the Raider is on top. You can almost hear him say whoops from up here, and whoops is not a good word. <laughs> I've heard worse. Whoops. And coming up with the football is Gene Upshaw. Let's watch. As Plunkett loses the handle. Minus four on the play. He just was trying to move up to the inside. Didn't quite tuck it in there quick enough. Frank, that was uh, that Robert Hardy, I believe, that came in and knocked it out of his hand. And Upshaw, old Gene Upshaw from Robstown, Texas, was right there to follow. Second down, 14. Out to the right goes Chandler with his 32 receptions for the year. Copy your screen. Fifth branch split to the left and the flag is down. Got him five. He's working with it. Wow. Fires over the middle to Van Egan. Gets out to the 40-yard line. You saw a movement, however, at the line of scrimmage. Beautiful facility here, the King Dome. No frills, if you will. They built it for some $83 million. It's great for football, Giff. For baseball, a different thing. Home runs, easy to come by, and yet you could hit one that would have gone 450 feet. It can hit one of the hanging towers and thus become a single. Bob Watson of the Yankees had that happen Defense, to him. Number 77, offside. I was told. Second down. I was told maybe by the mayor, is this thing paid for? Or it pays for itself, the kingdom, they were, maybe that was just some basic propaganda, but it sounds good to me. No, the, the governor-elect sponsored it. Hey. <laughs> I don't know what I'm Penalty, Bill Gregory offside, Seattle, second down and nine. Chandler goes right. Jim Puckett puts Branch out to the left. Motion, Van Egan. Slow draw, goes to King. He looks it over and gets out to the 45-yard line, a gain of about two. It will be third down and seven. Keith Butler, the right side linebacker for Seattle, makes the stop. And we'll see some changing now for the Seattle Seahawks as they bring in their prevent man, Vic Miner, a rookie out of northeast Louisiana. Third down, seven. Changes also now for Oakland. Arthur Whittington comes in. Little man from SMU. He wears number 22. And Chandler goes right where he works against... Curry Justin out there defensively for Seattle. Cliff Branch split to the left to tie it in, of course, Raymond Chester, number 88. Pressure on Cluckett, and he gets away. Cluckett, down he goes, and there's a scramble for the ball, and Seattle has the football. Cluckett, uh, hard, drops the football, and coming up with it is Robert Hardy. I think Jim had better stop scrambling. That's twice he's tried it and twice he's dropped the football. It seemed like to me that somewhere a 
about right in here. He says, gosh, I'm wide open, but I really don't want to run with this thing. So you can see he's carrying it. He hadn't been running with it very often, had that ball out in his right hand. Just didn't carry it, didn't tuck it away, and Hardy comes in at the right time, picked it up. Michael Jackson, whom we spoke of a moment ago, jarred it loose, and Hardy came up with it. Good field position, the Seahawks. 44-yard line of the Oakland Raiders, 7.35 remaining in the first quarter, no score. That's Largent in motion, dangerous receiver. Joe Depp, trying the left side over Tom Lynch. Gets a couple of yards, it'll be second down and eight. There was an evidence of a low round draft choice that worked out. Tenth round draft choice. We caught him in a preseason game against Dallas last year, Frank, and knew that he was headed for a regular spot. Remember? He has earned it. He has started every game since coming in as a tenth round draft pick. Side by side, Manu Tuiasasopo. I'm glad you finally got that one out. That's the last of him now. Second and eight, and Dornick. Flag is down as Dornick is down at the 30 yard line. Yardage enough for the first down, but again, a flag is down. Ah, Mira. Bring it back. Holding against Seattle. Look at Gene <laughs> Upshaw. Uh, you, you couldn't get him out of there with dynamite, however. A little bit bandaged, huh? 197th consecutive start Offense tonight. Number 82, holding. When you're with the Raiders, you want to run left. They've done it for years behind Shell and Upshaw. So it's almost a maxim of the game. Look at the Hawks. They haven't won a game at home this year. And they've lost three consecutive games. 30, 31 heartbreaker last week to Kansas City. The holding against Mark Bell, the tight end. They have moved the Seahawks all the way back inside their 49. Second down, and it's 18. Long count goes to Joe Dow to the 45 yard line back close to the original line of scrimmage. We'll call it third down and 10. Good call. Zahn was not impatient. He knew he couldn't get all the yardage back on one player at least didn't want to risk it. So he used the draw and he got some of it back. Oftentimes that does work because ordinarily in kind of a loose defense protecting the distance they'll open up that middle and you just pop through you can't pick up some good yardage in there. Join looks it over. The four wide receivers are in. Largent, Rabo, Green, and McCullum. And Dornick, single setback. And here comes the pressure. Zorn lost it. Oh. And just over the outstretched fingertips of Steve Largent. And so many times, Steve Largent has brought this crowd to its feet in his five year go at professional football but what Jim is doing now in the recent games that he wasn't doing earlier is going to his key man Largent because they had been double covering Largent so he turned to McCollum and used Sam very effectively now they're beginning to loosen up a little bit on Steve so he's going back to Largent. Ira Matthews led the nation at the University of Wisconsin in punt returns a couple of years ago he awaits the punt of Herman Weaver Thunder. Thunderfoot bangs it. Thunderfoot. And it is dramatic, but in the end zone, <laughs> where it'll come back out to the 20 yard line, which is in actuality a gain of 25 yards. So oh, we are into the first quarter with no score. We'll be back in a moment. Oakland, their own 20 yard line. Kenny King single setback. Van Egan in motion, and Van Egan out in front of King. And King tries to turn the corner and does so. Just getting back to the line of scrimmage. Chased out of bounds by Keith Butler as Van Egan, or rather Kenny King, picks up a yard. Kenny King averaged 7.9 yards per carry one year at, at Oklahoma. That's that's almost unbelievable. You know, Oakland really wanted to take him, but they didn't have a third round draft pick. And so he went to the Houston Oilers, where I think he carried the ball maybe half a dozen times. Three attempts he had at Houston a year ago. And Oakland this year traded. Of course, Jack Tatum and two seventh round draft picks. And Kenny King has been spectacular with just under 600 yards on the season. Second down and nine. Whoa. And Chandler. Oh. And almost picked off John Harris roaming the outfield at free safety. <laughs> Incomplete. If I were him, I think I'd limp a little bit too, because that thing hit him right in the hands, didn't it? Bless his heart. That should have been an interception. Did. 
Let's see. Now you see Harris moving in. He's got it zeroed in from his center field position. He just, my gosh, you couldn't put it any better. He just jumped up. You saw him come down there. This surface is pretty hard, as most of the artificial surfaces are. And he's limping a little bit as he comes back to line up. I got to tell you, Chandler almost had it on the rebound. If I was a quarterback, I, I got to tell you, it may be cruel, but you got to go back and try him again. Haven't you? Anybody get limping like that? Third down and nine, and Harris does stay in. He's still limping out there. That was Plunkett's first pass. He was able to get off. Whittington. Arthur. And Arthur. Arthur Whittington explodes out close to the 35-yard line. He'll have the first down at the 34. Now, that was a surprise call, Don, and as you suggested earlier, against a looser defense, it can work for you. That's exactly what it did. Well, Arthur course out of SMU and Quero, Texas did move into the outside. Van Egan, look at him. Number 30 comes in here. He is one of the most amazing athletes that I think I've seen in pro ball today. I'm talking about Van Egan in the way he does such a consistent job. In and, out. and you're right, the play did work. It opened up to the outside on a long yardage situation. First 10 for the Raiders. Duncan. Whittington. And Whittington is hammered. There at the 39-yard line by Keith Butler, gain of four. It'll be second down and six. He's a typical, as you look at Dan Pastorini, you'll be hearing from him at halftime. Dan DeRue interviewed him, and you'll be hearing that interview. Whittington is a typical Oakland Raider type, underrated, and yet he can make the key play to kill you, as he did with a kickoff return for a touchdown a week ago against Cincinnati. They always re underrated Pete Banaszak all those years. Remember, Frank? Mm -hmm. Chandler is split right on second down and six. Bucket tries to get it over the middle to oh, tight end. Raymond tough. Chester and glued to Raymond Chester was Keith Simpson, one of the fine athletes on this Seattle football team. Top draft choice. But keep your eye on number 88, even as you look at the slide of Simpson. Because Chester is one of three reasons why they traded David Casper. Chester himself, an original Oakland first round draft choice, then traded to Baltimore and brought back here in a subsequent trade. Then they have Derek Ramsey and Todd Christensen, and Oakland believes that the three of them more than compensate for Casper, who admittedly is one of the greatest. Third and five. Chandler in motion. Whittington doesn't handle the football. It would have been a hard pass to handle, but it would also have been a first down. Well, it well, looked like it came over there awfully fast. I, it was certainly catchable, I guess, but it uh, seemed to me that you see Jim's getting a little bit of pressure. They're throwing some. Actually, they didn't throw any linebackers. Yeah, they got one linebacker coming, but hey, that ball's right in there. Arthur, you got to catch that, son. We got to. Yes, sir. Maybe we made the mistake in giving him the plug on past performance. I don't really think he's paying any attention to us. Speaking of past performance, he has been up there almost every year. In the, he's leading the AFC now, but meanwhile, the Giants, Dave Jennings, is just running away with the hunting honors. We saw Ray Guy at 43-7. Jennings is over 47 yards on his average. Guy, even though it doesn't turn over, gets it inside the 20, and it goes to Will Lewis. Flag is down as Lewis goes down out around the 26-yard line. The flag down in the area, which might indicate there was an illegal man downfield. The referee tonight is Fred, Fred Silva. And holding, and it works against Seattle twice now. They've been detected holding. Well, boy, he threw that flag at a funny time. It was uh, way back around the 20-yard line. I saw that flag fly up to about the 40, so the holding must have occurred in initial contact with a... On the run back, number 83. I see. Holding. First down. Steve Rabel, who was fighting the outside man of the Oakland Raiders, coming down, detected holding. Rabel says, no, Jack, I didn't. Jack nods. Quiet, stoic. Jack Patera, but don't make him angry. We'll be back. <laughs> Sea. Livingston Seagull. Right, see, they've been floating around our window out there around the hotel. I've had more fun. I've been opening the window like feeding them some things. Those Seagull. are buzzards. Oh. <laughs> it didn't look like those girls. First and ten. Seattle with the ball at their 16-yard line following the penalty. That's Sawyer in motion. And Joe Dapp. Top 
gets out for about five, close to the 21-yard line. It'll be second down and five. He's an interesting case. Frank told you earlier he joined the team, played against the Redskins, gained 117 yards in that game, which was about what he had gained in three years with the Rams. Originally a 12th round pick with the Rams, hurt his ankle a year ago. And when Seattle got in trouble for running backs this year, with the loss of Sherman Smith, they picked up Joe Dash. This is Big Dan joining on the left side. He'll get a couple of yards out of it. Now, last week we started slowly. Remember that brilliant game between Houston and New England? But they had too much firepower for it to remain a dormant game, and so it became 38-34. One can expect the same thing to happen between these two teams. There is a lot of firepower on that field. Third down and four. Rabel split out to the left. McCollum and Largent at the bottom of your screen. That's McCollum in the slot. And the Raiders in their four-man front. Good man. Good. good call as Dorney just explodes over that left side behind Louis Bullard and Tom Lynch gets the first down out near the 35-yard line. I would like to think that the, that was an audible call by Zorn. You saw there was a little bit of hesitancy before they made that play. A quick little same handoff. You start running these plays in grade school. But they can really be effective. They had them split out. The linebackers were not there. I think it was a, an audible call. At least it was a good call. Picked up a first down. This guy is a very impressive young man. Looks like a nice clean cut. He ought to be a doctor, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I trust that face. First and ten. Large and in motion. Zarn. Very cool. There and he gets it down to Larger and he has the first down inside Raider territory. A Frank. big blitz was on. Frank. Now was that a good catch? It looked to me that ball was thrown so hard. Larger's hands looked so soft when he caught it. Let's see if we can get this is Steve Larger again. As I mentioned at the top of the show, he's been with Jerry Rome for eight years. Three years at Tulsa, his fifth year here. Trying to work open. The thing that they give him the most credit for is his ability to run routes, but that way his hand just went up. You saw him give with that ball. Man, he could catch him in a crap. That and was Zorn nice was under deep pressure. Don McClanahan, 57, had blitzed. He fell as he was about to hit Zorn, who avoided him neatly. First and 10, the ball inside the Raiders' 49-yard line. Zorn, again, feeling the pressure from Hendricks and gets it off to the tight end, John Sawyer. And Sawyer has another Seattle first down, and the crowd loves it. That's what I meant by firepower. They can do it quickly on either side. They can. Sawyer's what they call one of their good old boys up here from southern Mississippi. Just a country boy from Baker, Louisiana. I didn't know exactly what was Baker, and I was outside of Baker. Ground look again. Again, saying pretty good protection. Sawyer moves out to the other side. A little bit late release by Sawyer. He blocked a little bit, then came back in, picked and it up. They're backing it up. Offense, illegal formation, number 72. Uh, uh, that does hurt. However, Seattle is in and out of formations they have not used thus far this season. Louis Ballard over the left side. We saw another. Gates, another first down. Is all the way back now to the 47-yard line of Seattle. First down and 15. Large it right. Jeff Moore tries the right side, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Jeff Moore, a speedster who was mainly on the special teams, running back kicks a year ago, but he can really turn it on. He really can. He's the kind of kid who shows flashes, and you keep hoping that he's going to evolve into a star. He's another of those from Jackson State, a lower round draft choice, but with tremendous speed. He was very impressive in preseason. of the first quarter as Moore once again drives the right side, gets close to the 45-yard line, a gain of three. It'll be third down and seven. They'd be looking for a little bit more than three yards off that play that time. Second down and ten. I think they were in hopes that they'd at least pick up six, seven. They're now still in a fairly long third down situation. And we will not get a playoff before the first quarter expires. 
Still no score from the King Dome in Seattle, Washington. Score over to visit to Jack Patera, his counterpart, Jim Blunt. The Boeing 747. The Boeing 727. It's on the scoreboard, and we'd like to apologize if you are experiencing audio difficulties. We are having trouble also from here, and you are getting what we call in technological terms backup audio. We'll try and get it straightened out for you. Third down and seven. Seattle has the ball. Jim Jodot, single setback. The ball at the 45 yard line of the Oakland Raiders. And Zorn steps into the pocket and is batted away. Hustling in there, knocking the ball away. Reggie Kinlaw, or was it? Yeah, I guess it's Kinlaw. Reggie Kinlaw has been playing superb football for the Raiders. He is just about beating Dave Pear out of that position. Of course, Pear hurt earlier in the season with a having a neck problem, an ankle problem. Fourth down. There's Ira Matthews. Herman Weaver. Again, we will tell you it appears to be a punt. Seattle sometimes doesn't do what it appears that they're going to do. Oh, and it just does trickle into the end zone. So Seattle will have their possession out of the 20-yard line. I'll tell you about college football coming your way this Saturday as we're getting down to those critical games. It'll begin live at 12 o'clock Eastern time, and it's a doubleheader. Game one will be regional coverage, so check the listing for the game in your area. Michigan, Ohio State, of course, the Rose Bowl on the line there. Oklahoma, Nebraska, the Orange Bowl on the line there. And, of course, Yale at Harvard in that classic. The winner of that one, of course, if it's Yale, well, they will be the Ivy League champions. So check the listing for the game in your area. Then stay tuned for game number two, and that's a classic also. USC against UCLA. And those of you attending the Harvard game, we want to remind you, it's an earlier starting time. It'll be 12.35. First down, 10. Rocket, Van Egan. All right, let's take a look at the stats, Frank, for the first quarter. You can say first down, Seattle's edge. Rushing edge, Seattle. Yards passing, Seattle. Total yards, clearly Seattle. And a huge edge in time of possession. So Seattle is playing very well, but they have not scored. I'm afraid Jacob, Jacob Green, the yeah. number one draft pick and who... Well, he has just been an absolutely brilliant performer, and this is rookie year is down on the carpet. He is in obvious pain being treated there by the medical staff of the Seattle Seahawks. We'll have a report when we come back. Jacob Green. You see the left knee in there. That one is the number one pick we mentioned out of Houston, Texas, and Texas A&I, and, and that's going to be some problem with that left knee. You really hate to see that. Jacob Green being treated as you can see Texas A&M actually where he was a unanimous All-American up on his feet but I cannot believe that if nothing else he has certainly had a hyper extension there he is he has been the outstanding pass rusher for Seattle and an outstanding young man they have no replacement for that man for the simple reason you can't replace a man with that degree of excellence at the position Jacob Green being helped off the field. We'll try and get a further report. Meanwhile, Terry Dion has come in, a rookie from the University of Oregon, number 62, fourth round draft pick. Jim Plunkett looks over the defense. Spots a seven, second down and seven. The ball at the 23 yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Still no score. Cliff Branch out to the left for Plunkett. To the right is Bob Chandler. Kenny King, right side. Coming up there quickly is Keith Simpson defensively for Seattle. And he drops King right at the line of scrimmage. I tell you, Seattle is playing with great intensity. It's incredible. Oakland comes in here and they seem snake bit, but it's still early. Oakland, of course, first in the AFC in rushing, 11th, or the second in rushing, seventh in passing. Seattle weak against the rush, 11th in their 14 member team of the American Football Conference and yet Oakland has been able to do very little against Seattle third down seven three wide receivers now for the Raiders Morris Bradshaw number 81 comes in out goes Raymond Chester, to the tight end Plunkett gets back in the pocket but he's got a crowd with him 
Still going. Still scrambling, but they'll bring it back. He was in the arms of a tackler. It was Bill Gregory. That, of course, the new rule this year to try and keep your quarterbacks healthy. And putting on an extremely effective pass rush. That's the third time we've seen Plunkett in the process of scrambling. The other two times he fumbled. One he recovered, one he lost. And he had that football out like a big grapefruit there. Again, ready to go. Did you see it done? Well, I think you, know, you mentioned Jim is, it's really has not been playing too much for the last couple of years. Of course, he's been in the league for 10 years. And he's never been considered a real top runner. Well, <laughs> Maybe that's one of the reasons. Great guy to punt, Will Lewis, the rookie free agent from Millersville State. Oh, and Guy has hit a bomb, and it drives Will Lewis back to his 34-yard line. But it was low, and Lewis gets out over the 45, close to the 47. 51-yard punt by Ray Guy. Frank, Seattle has had consistently good field position, and yet they haven't capitalized. So Seattle again, as you pointed out, will have the football near midfield and will be coming back to the Kingdom in Seattle in just a moment. Kingdom in Seattle, Washington, and Seattle has the football. Once again, good field position. The Oakland Raiders, of course, with the win tonight, will stay one game ahead of San Diego in the AFC Western Division. Seattle has a four and six record, but they still feel with games ahead, mostly against divisional opponents, that they can be in it. On first down, Largent in motion. Lawrence McCutcheon, who was acquired three weeks ago from the Denver Broncos, who had acquired him from L.A. this past season after eight years with the Rams, where he became the Rams' all-time leading rusher. And he gets four yards. It'll be second down and six. He was an exceptional football player, as you fans know. He was regarded as through by the Rams when they sent him to Denver. But he still retains the capacity to throw the option pass very effectively. Larry Brinson. Player claimed from Dallas at the beginning of the season. Number 36 is the other setback. This is large and in motion. Brinson, right side, and Brinson bounces off one Raider to the outside, but covered there, short of the first down at the 46 yard line. It'll be second down, and we'll call it two. Thursday night, we'll be moving around the nation as we slide into Miami, and we will be down there for the Dolphins and San Diego. Are we sliding in? That's a good way to do it. Well, it seems that way along about this time of the season. Jacob Green, by the way, has a sprained knee. Not as bad as we had feared when we first saw him go down. Third and two, and Jeff Moore, number 32, replaces Brinson, 36, at setback. So it's McCutcheon and Brinson, or rather Moore. Zorn trying to get off the screen, but the Raiders are too wise for that. And he checks off. Finds a receiver, Steve Largent. Largent has the first down at the 40-yard line. You see Largent come back. He ran his route. He saw his quarterback in trouble. Game back done. Well, he really is an exceptionally smart player. Now, I don't think, you know, he's not very big, not very fast. He just always gets open, makes catches. He's got a consecutive game. What do you call that reception streak going here for Seattle? He's an unusual player. And that he really does run precision routes. And he and Zorn have, through the years, have established a great combo. First down and 10. Larry Brinson. Ted Brinson, Hendricks. he's corralled by Ted Hendricks, who is playing maybe the best football of his 12 year career. He has been spectacular for Oakland this year. He makes the big plays. He's always had a penchant for that. John Matusak is down on the turf now. Oh, oh they can't lose him either from that point of view. Well, he says, I'll just go ahead and get up. <laughs> Big John, 6'8", 280 pounder. Kind of a typical Oakland player, if there is such a thing. They got him as a free agent when he was cut by Washington in 76. He had been the number one draft pick in all of the NFL back in 73. Houston. They sent him to Kansas City. They sent him to Washington. Washington cut him, and Matuzak, for the last couple of years, has been playing good football. Oakland, of course, historically the most efficient team on Monday night football. 14-1-1. and one. Loss of a couple, second down and 12. 11 minutes remaining in the first half, no score. Brinson, 36, single setback. Zorn reads the blitz, has the time, and Largent, or rather, 
trying to handle the football downfield was Steve Rabel. Well, I think there was confusion between the quarterback and the intended receiver on the pattern. You notice how close Rabel was to Lodgen? Once again, I think he was trying to audible a play. He's in his relatively new offense for those four wide receivers. That could be difficult for him, too. The ball was a little bit, well, actually, it was a little bit wide, but Steve... If Steve had caught it, we'd have said, man, what a terrific catch. But as we did, well, it's near complete. The, bandit, right. the bandits are in for Oakland. That's Hartman, great pass rusher. And Willie Jones, number 90. Hartman, 86. Third down, 12. Flag goes down as Rainbow doesn't hold on downfield. Well, Mike Davis was defending against Rabel. He should have caught that one for sure. That one hit him between the eight and the three. Pushing off against Oakland. And had Grable handled that ball, he could have gone in. Hey, what was the call? Defensive holding? Is that what? That was the call? Let's just wait and see why I'm asking you guys. Defense number 36, illegal contact. See there. First down. Yep. Illegal contact. It was more than five yards downfield. First down, the ball inside the 37-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Big break. Big break as it gave him a first down. Capacity crowd. Seattle, four and six on the season. They've dropped their last three, 30-31, right here in the Kingdom last week to Kansas City. Oakland on a five-game roll. Oh, super defensive play, hustling across the line of scrimmage. Number 53, Rod Martin. He collects Lawrence McCutcheon for a loss of about six. Somebody better block those guys on the outside. That was a super defensive play. Watch it. Well, it is, but we saw Hendricks make the same one, so you've got to suggest, I mean, you've got to think, and maybe somebody's missing some blocks over that area. Both those outside linebackers, when they see that flow to their side, take that inside rush, go right through there and knock it off. Good play by Martin. Good play by Hendricks we saw earlier. Hey, it's a very well-coordinated defense because they do so many things. They show you a lot of different fronts, a lot of different people. And you really have got to have your homework down. Second down, 15. goes down his arm is complete to Sam McCullum short of the first down at the 38 yard line and holding is going to work against Seattle so third time after pretty good gains Seattle has been called for that particular infraction Oakland has the beginnings of getting its pass rush together now oh they've been doing a pretty good job and Seattle this year has not been doing a good job in defending against that pass rush uh, Zorn coming in this game I believe they've been trapped 29 times that's a fairly sizable number when you consider your not offense number 72 only Lewis Buller he's got a couple tonight second down long yardage the ball now over midfield back in Seattle territory those penalties have cost Seattle heavily they are the reason why they have not capitalized on their field position tonight second down 25 good blitz down for the Raiders and they like to give it to you here comes Hendricks and Zorn gets off the screen Jeff Moore and Jeff Moore is wrestled out of bounds at the 48 and another flag is down Against 61 and against 61 Tom Lynch is 61 for Seattle Tom Lynch was one of the guys we were talking to the Seattle PR people today in the trade that they've made with Dallas and swapping first round draft picks to get Tony Dorsett first man they picked was Steve August they got Tom Lynch and over the middle linebacker Terry Beast so they and all three are regulars so they didn't do badly yeah it's kind of theirs. they swapped their number two back to Dallas for Duke Ferguson who's no longer with the club so they feel that was the trade that was very good for them and obviously very good for Dallas offensive pass interference 61 refused third down Oakland besides they would rather have Seattle with the football third down and about 22 and take the penalty the penalty there is Tom Lance number 61 the fellow we talked about through a block before the pass was thrown third down 21 
the setback is Jodat. And Dorn under pressure tried to time it out with Rabel incomplete. And it'll be fourth down, and the crowd is beginning to get on their young Seahawks football team. Zorn's the guy they're giving the trouble to, Frank. They uh, is beginning to some rumbles here. They're trying to say, hey, we love you, Jimmy, but we want you to sit on the bench for a while. It happens to a lot of folks. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Well, oh, yeah. he, characteristically, last week he had five interceptions against Kansas City. Well, that's been his problem. He's thrown way, way too many interceptions in his career. Weaver to punt. Thunderfoot. He bangs it. Ira Matthews watches it, hoping it'll get into the end zone. And it does. So this will come out to the 20-yard line. As Thunderfoot has put it in the end zone twice, and Jim Zorn gets on the horn. Where are all those people coming from? We'll be back. Just say hello to a brand new world. It's just outside your door. Now that Pat in the kingdom, both the Oakland Raiders and the Seattle Seahawks having trouble moving the football, the Oakland Raiders have a first down, the ball at their own 20-yard line, and Jim Pluckett, who took over five games ago, beat San Diego, he beat Pittsburgh, he beat Seattle. 33-14 in their first game, he also beat Miami and Cincinnati. And they are a little tentative so far this evening. Here comes Kenny Kane. And Kenny Kane twirled out of bounds at the 24-yard line by carry Justin after a gain of about four yards it'll be second and six and we're going to pause five seconds and allow our friends and affiliates along the line tell you who's bringing this football game to you KOMO TV for Seattle Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and the dandy one Don Meredith watching the Seattle Seahawks trying to stay alive in the Western Division of the AFC and of course the Oakland Raiders trying to stay on top of San Diego by a game they need a win tonight Second down and six, Mark Van Egan, and he is smothered at the 25-yard line. Give him one, it'll be third down and five. Astonishing, we have now had more than 21 minutes of football, and Oakland simply hasn't shown anything in the way of offense. And astonishingly, the score remains 0-0. Zero, zero. Again, the two wide receivers, and so far, Punk has been unable to get to them. Bob Chandler, a superb receiver out on the right side, number 85, having a great year. He has eight touchdowns on 32 receptions coming into tonight. The speech to Cliff Branch, the other wide receiver. Now he's put Branch and Chandler both to the left side. But Branch has 32 receptions with five touchdowns. Bucket runs out of time. And he runs out of the pocket. He'll get the first down. Out of bounds at the 32-yard line, first down, and this is a dimension that Puckett has added to the Oakland Raiders. Well, I must say, the man had, he was facing tremendous coverage. He was looking deep downfield for Cliff Branch, who couldn't get loose. He was left with no recourse but to scramble. Puckett has only been sacked five times in the last five games. That's the kind of job the offensive line has been doing for the Oakland Raiders and of course he is so nifty as you just saw a moment ago. It isn't anything graceful looking but somehow or other he gets out of the trouble and can often pick up that first down on his own. 8-0-6. Remaining in the first half. No score. That's Chandler in motion. Play action by Plunkett. Bucket looks around and finally comes up with Raymond Chester. And Raymond Chester has a gain of about six. It'll be second down and four. Hit there convincingly by John Harris. That's right. But, 44. But good first down yardage. And I wondered when he was going to start going to that remarkable athlete. You know, when they brought him back the second time from Baltimore in the second trade when they reacquired him, uh, the Oakland organization was toying with the notion of making Chester a fullback, even as Al Davis had made Hubert Dixon a tight end, a fullback in earlier years. He is such a great athlete, he can certainly play either position. Second down, five. Draw play, Van Egan. And Van Egan turns up close to the 40-yard line, short of the first down. It'll be a third down. We'll call it three. Manu Tuiasasopo on top of Van Egan. A remarkable stat about Van Egan, who's playing in his 99th consecutive game tonight. He has carried the ball over 1,350 times with the Raiders, their leading rusher. 
and his longest run from scrimmage, 34 yards. <laughs> so he does not a game breaker, but he always shows up. 99 times in a row, that tells you something. Though. That means a lot of knockdowns. They grow them big in the Chenango Valley where Colgate is. Big of heart. Third and three. Bucket. Dancing and looking and overthrows. Raymond Chester was wide open. Wide open. That was the one that Plunkett really blew. Well, he's upset because I think that there could have been a... I seem like I always take up for quarterbacks, but I think Chester... What he was really trying to do, he said, look, you're supposed to go on down another direction. He got a little pressure coming in from the outside, or the inside. That was Robert Hardy. He throws now the ball. you see Chester all alone right there. It could can't. be that he was not supposed to be all alone there, though. <laughs> well, he was, wasn't he? <laughs> he sure was. Those things happen. Great guy will punt. Will Lewis, the rookie from Millersville State. There he is, 5'9", 185-pounder, averaging a little over seven yards of return on the season. Ray Guys, their number three quarterback. Ray has got the strongest arm by far of any other quarterback. Look at that ball. Ray Guy is going to put it out inside the 10 yard line. Tremendous kick. And the flag is down once again out of the 25 yard line. That was a 51 yard putt by Ray Guy. Well, let's see what this call is. Flip. Good beat. You know, we were talking about Ray Guy, and we've missed it many times. He was. Little face mask. Uh, how about that? Number one draft pick. But what a terrific all-around athlete. As Jack Patera says that's all right. But he is the, the number three quarterback. Does have a really good strong arm and could step in there and play if something happened to the other two. And like Herman Weaver, he'll throw the ball out of <laughs> formation. He's completed three of his last four, old Thunderfoot. Huh. Patera will find all kinds of tricks. Face mask is the call. Oakland, number 56, face mask. First down. Jeff Barnes caught with his hand in the wrong place. <laughs> you don't mind picking and singing. <laughs> Willie Nelson, eat your heart out. Oh, what can I tell you? We'll be back. Along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith. Watching, surprisingly so, a scoreless game with 625 remaining here in the first half. Two offensive-minded ball clubs. Young Jim Zorn in his fifth year. Moves the Seahawks up to a first down and 10. The ball at the 23-yard line. His own 23. McCutcheon and McCutcheon out over the 25 to the 27-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Well, Patera is going to have to start with some tricks. He's been a notable coach in terms of his coaching creativity. A defensive ball player, he has become a very creative, offensive-minded coach, including the use of Efren Herrera. As you look at him, beautifully slimmed down, an august presence. He's used Efren Herrera even as a receiver. Second down, seven. Zorn changing up. cannot get there off the fingertips and Dwayne Osteen another player picked up for the Los Angeles Rams by the Oakland Raiders in there defensively now and Zorn will bring his receivers back and talk over a third down and seven he'll get the signal as is flashed in from Jerry Rohn Don was telling you about him earlier Jerry has really been a student of the game for as long as I've known him and I've known him since high school days his father was a coach and I think he really does have a very good football mind, particularly an offensive football mind. Third and seven, Larton to the left. Out to the right is Rabel, who faces one of the best defensive backs in the league in Oakland's Lester Hayes. Zorn. Intercept. And there it is. Picked off. Out on the left side. Defensively, Mike Davis was there. His third interception of the year. Part of the Dorn will be booed resoundingly. The reason I think he got some pressure that time, really didn't set the throw through off balance, didn't have enough strength behind it, and we're going to be right back in just a minute. Leading the NFL at the left cornerback spot. And Oakland now, good field position, their own 45 yard line. Now it goes to Whittington. And Whittington kicking in the afterburner, and 
running away from Keith Butler to get out of a bounds after a pickup of a couple. Don, you were the quarterback, but doesn't Plunkett seem tentative tonight? You see how tentative he seemed when he threw that screen to Winnington? Well, I think what Jim's trying to do, Howard, is he's trying to establish his own style as quarterback. And really, as what I only admission at the top of the show, he hasn't had one for a long time. So I think he would be tentative. And yeah, he's, he's not throwing with a great deal of confidence right now. Second down and eight. No, there's a good one. That's the time, and he fires it into Bob Chandler. And Bob Chandler drops the ball, but now they're ruling it was never handled incomplete. Incomplete. Well, that ball was thrown with some confidence, and it was not done that he just sat back, got his plan that right foot step forward, and threw a good ball. This is a very important series for Oakland as you look at Plunkett. Who is number 17, and where is Milton? Don't mess with them. They can't spell college. They don't know anything, <laughs> right? That's, is that collage? Under any circumstance, I think it's collage. Under any circumstance, the interesting thing here is this is the first time in this whole game Oakland has had good field position to start a drive, and they've just, in effect, wasted two downs. But here's a big one. Third down, eight. Chandler is right. Good branch up at the top of your screen. Looking for Randy uh -huh. Chester, and Chester took his eyes off the ball. He really did, <laughs> and Plunkett is pained. Look at his face. To say the least, he is plain pained, he said. My gosh. Tell you, you won't see that often from this man, Raymond Chester, who had a great season last year along with Casper, and as we watch again, we will remind you that Casper, of course, six weeks ago went to the Houston Oilers for a first-round draft pick and a couple of seconds. Because they figured that Raymond Chester was their man, as good a tight end as you're going to find in the league, and they had backups in Derek Ramsey and Todd Christensen. But that time, Raymond Chester could have had the first down deep in Seattle territory. Great guy to punt. Will Lewis stations himself at his own 10 yard line. He's getting a little ragged. Guy had to oh, oh, oh. He has kicked oh. this one almost to the rooftop here at the Kingdom. A fair catch called for and made at the 19-yard line. The Ray guy had to hurry, but nevertheless, he really put something on that one. I tell you, I haven't seen anything that high since Ed Roebuck tried to hit the top of the Astrodome fungo heading. <laughs> there was pressure on this kick, and Ray guy had to hustle. I haven't seen anything that high since us in Denver. All right. He did get a little pressure, and whammo, that ball does go. His foot, if you see, goes above the head on every kick. It's getting a little competitive because Ray's been considered the number one punter around. He's getting a little, uh, I say, a lot of competition out of New York these days. Jennings. First and ten. Jordan has a lot of time. And he's and is open, and it's Jeff Moore. And Jeff Moore battling close to midfield in the arms of Ted Hendricks. Now, that's an exceptionally good pass batter, but one that you don't see a great deal. Jeff Moore came out, trailed out of the backfield. They cleared out that zone with a deep receiver. Saw a little play action pass in there. Didn't get a big heavy rush, but Tuzak is back in the game, as you see. One on one on Hendricks. Whoa, he almost dropped that ball, didn't he? He says, hold on. Now he stepped out of bounds. Good. They had a good clearing pattern to go deep. That was, I think, Raybo that went deep. Jeff Moore came, came in a little bit late. 31 yard pickup. The first down is near midfield. Still no score. 4.58 remaining in the first half. Norn, wide open is Larson, and he holds on at the 35 yard line. Wrestled to the turf there, but Larson has another Seattle Seahawks first down. We remind you as you see this quick firepower by Zorn and the Hawks. Will ISO now down on Larson. Not an unusual pattern. In fact, we saw him miss Largent just about a half a step earlier on this same pattern. That time he had zeroed in there, came in. Largent made a good move to the inside, and that was Burgess Owens. Good tackle by court. Burgess, yeah. whose lent stability. He is an excellent tackler to that secondary. Burgess Owens, of course, replaced Charles Phillips, who was hurt in the preseason. First and ten. over the right side and Brinson Why were they there that? close to the 35 yard line gain of a yard it'll be second down and nine the Tuzak Reggie Kinlaw both there you've talked Don about Rome Jerry Rome 
and his relationship with Lodgen. It's a very natural thing. Since Lodgen went to Tulsa, Jerry Rome had gone to Tulsa. Rome had made a national name, throwing to a slowish end named Howard Twilley. Didn't he ever? And Lodgen is of that ilk. Second down nine. Zorn shouting a change off. He has three wide receivers. And this is Brinson. And Brinson is taken there as he moves inside the 35, close to the 34-yard line. Otis McKinney, they call him the pirate in their prevent defense, and Rod Martin made the stop. It's third down and seven. Frankly, I don't understand Rome's calls on those plays. Well, I was what I was going to make a comment was McKinney's tackle because, you know, that was one. Had he not been down under that pile and grabbed him by the feet, they had a pretty good hole working in there, so it could have made some good game. I would say that that uh, it's not so much the call. It was a pretty good defensive play that time. Four wide receivers now on third down seven. Single setback, Lawrence McCutcheon. Jesse Green, 86, is in there with McCullum, Largent, and Rabel. And McCutcheon, I believe Zorn might have changed that when he read the defense of the Oakland Raiders, and McCutcheon explodes over the left side behind Tom Lynch, gets down inside the 20, first down near the 17. Took them completely by surprise, going to the rush for the third straight time. You saw 56 Jeff Barnes move to the inside from his linebacker position. He moved in, he guessed wrong. He went to the inside hole, got blocked. McCutcheon had a big hole to the outside and moved on in there. That was one of those situations, in my opinion, where the defense, they just uh, they caught him in the right defense. And Seattle will not try to get a playoff before the two-minute warning here in the first half. And now Oakland says, we're going to stop it. So Oakland uses one of their timeouts, stops the puck. And that is the indication. Now, tell me why they do that. I have never understood that particular move by well, coaches keeps, that I've seen. What does that It mean? takes away one timeout, really, for Seattle. Well, but, but why, why would Oakland? What are they talking about out there? Matt Millen is really upset. I would think so. You know, that's they were talking about Millen. He's the guy who's a rookie. But the thing they say, he has added, added the stability, the leadership. Which is amazing line. because yeah, they've got so many veterans on the club. There he is right now. Uh, he was a freshman uh, linebacker at Penn State, and then they moved <laughs> him to defensive end. He came to the Raiders. The first time they looked at him, he weighed about 275 pounds, and they... Of course, picked him in the second round, and they said, you better get on a protein diet, baby. And you're going to be a linebacker again. If he's from Penn State, he's a linebacker. If anything's established in the NFL, the guy from Penn State's a linebacker. I think he's upset. I saw Willie Brown there on the sideline doing the timeout move. I think that they didn't really intend to call timeout there. How can this help Oakland calling timeout with five seconds to I agree with you 100%. So I have no sense at all. I think they made a mistake is what I'm saying. Of I think that's what Miller was upset about. If the offense had called timeout, you could understand it better. Yes, I could have understood that better. That's I right. They could have. Well, anyway, there's timeout. <laughs> Interesting game. We were surprised there wasn't more scoring than we've seen thus far. And, well, there's a team that'll put some points up there. And again, the bottom part of the graphic will indicate we have a special starting time from Miami with the Chargers and the Dolphins at 8.30 Eastern time. The Chargers are watching this now and rooting for the team with the football, the Hawks. They would be in a tie should Seattle knock off Oakland tonight. On first down, Zorn quickly looking out into the flat and not handling the football, the tight end, John Sawyer. I'll tell you what, he set up a good move right there on that same pattern to go out, make a look out to Sawyer and come back to Largent, who did a little streak pattern right down through the middle of that secondary. If he can lay it in there, he had him wide open. He's John Sawyer out of Southern Mississippi. All right, let's look at those AFC West standings again, and that is some terrific division. Oakland needs tonight to win if they had to stay a game ahead of the Chargers. Chargers come off a 20-7 victory against Kansas City. Not an easy one. No, tough game. Second down, 10. I like that Fuller for Kansas City. I think he's a good quarterback. Right up the middle goes... McCutcheon, a flag is down. And again, a flag is down. If McCutcheon was not Hold handled, well, it, all I 
academic because the oh. holding indicated against Seattle. Now that's the fourth major penalty against Seattle after instituting determined and effective drives. That's why they're still scoreless. Oakland has had virtually no offense in this game. Man, they penalized them 15, didn't they? By the way, that did not look like the McCutcheon that two teams Holding gave up on. Offense. Holding is, is a 10-yard penalty, if I'm not mistaken. That looks like they moved that thing 15 yards because they had already picked up a little bit of yardage, but what do I know? So Seattle now will be moved back. It'll be second down and 20. We'll be back after this message from the National Football League. And, of course, Tom Lynch, the fine offensive guard. There for Seattle. All right, 152 remaining in the first half. Second down, 20, following that holding call. Larry Brinson, single setback, number 36. The four wide receivers are in for Seattle. I was wrong about the holding call. It was just 10 yards. Ten I'm yards. sorry about that. Nobody's perfect. Well, I was up until then. <laughs> Zorn, he can move around. Upended at the 20-yard line, gets seven yards, but it will be third down and 12. Rod Martin collecting Zorn at the 20-yard line. Sure do get sticky down there close, doesn't it? This has been the trouble with Seattle. They have moved the ball fairly well against every opponent. They get down close, and they don't put the ball into the end zone either settling for a field goal but or getting into trouble with a holding call interception fumbles that's the point Frank tonight it's the penalties four wide receivers Dorning 33 single setback Margaret Rabel McCollum and Green and back goes Zorn complete the short of the first down to Sam McCollum he bobbles the football but they're going to mark it back inside the 10 yard line they say he was down and it'll be a decision time. No points on the scoreboard, and it will be fourth down. I would think there's no real decision. Yeah, you bring Herrera in and take the three. Put it on the board. Jack Patera obviously agrees, and out trots Efren Herrera. Keep in mind, Seattle does not always do what they're supposed no. to do. Herrera can be a very effective receiver, as we learned in the Atlanta game last year. Zorn, the holder. I think they go with the points here, though. I would think so. 27-yard attempt. Oh, 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 oh! Herrera's way Herrera. There he goes! <laughs> Out of bounds. He does not get into the end zone. A little too eager, but the crowd loves it. That is amazing. That's a first down. That Herrera has become the most exciting wide receiver in the game of football today. <laughs> oh. Only on Monday night. <laughs> it happened in Atlanta, Howard, a year ago. That's Atlanta right. and Seattle, they did the same thing. You would think that the scouting report would have alerted Oakland to watch this dangerous and wily wide receiver. But he's he's actually learned several Listen, new routes, Frank. That's the reason why. Not only that, once, you know what Patera did? Yeah, look, look he was that. out of... You know what Patera did once? He used Herrera as a lead blocker in front of Zorn. <laughs> and, and Herrera made an effective block, and Zorn spun for 25 yards. Herrera trying to get in. Comes up short, first down and goal. The ball inside the one. Is that fun? He is a favorite here in Seattle. It's all about Herrera. <laughs> they had a an auction the other night here in Seattle for a charity, and Efren offered, and all those Seattle Seahawks were involved, and he offered as his contribution to this auction, he would come in and cook a Mexican dinner. And it sold for $1,700. Here's another angle of it. You'll see again, number one, you can tell a receiver by the route that he runs. <laughs> good pass, as a matter of fact. Left hand. 
your basic I love background. it. I love it. Apron Herrera from Guadalajara. I, I love this for yeah, I'm throwing back. The little, <laughs> the, the little accidental lateral. Anyway, he was going to come in for $1,700. He comes in, cooks you a Mexican dinner. His favorites, he says, <laughs> nachos, margaritas. And on top of that, he was supposed to be for six people. <laughs> so he upped it to 10 people. He says, also, his wife Susie and I'll teach you how to dance. <laughs> you see him on the sidelines there? That's great. Patera keeping his cool, telling Zorn exactly what to do. Herrera. The answer to everything your Premian wanted to be. <laughs> think what he's doing to the rest of the kickers around. Uh, you think Tony French is a little upset? Oh, they're all upset. Uh, all these kickers, they say, oh, Herrera's got it all up there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were in Santa Fe with him last year for another charity for the Santa Fe Hospital. They came up for a tennis tournament. Bill Gregory, Steve August. Steve August won it, by the way. He's a good tennis player. First down, goal to go. 24 seconds remaining in the half. Oakland has used another timeout. Argent settles into a wing on the right side. And the catch it. Bangs he got it. Ball. He got it. He got it. show they love the Seahawks and this is typical Seahawk play Herrera for the conversion Apron Herrera from Guadalajara the flag is down flag is down the penalty if it's against Oakland will be assessed on the kickoff Side, so that means the kickoff will come from the 40 yard line. Lawrence McCutcheon, all time Ram leading rusher. He actually put together 6,000 yards and a little over seven seasons there. Had a groin pull a couple of years ago, never really got back from it. <laughs> he looks almost statuesque, doesn't he? Going yeah. off there. He's, He's grown about a foot. Yeah. <laughs> you love this crowd that's why you love to have Seattle on the schedule because I don't care what their one and lost record is they can do it against anybody and Patera makes the game fun I said a year ago when he used Herrera as a receiver what this league needs is not parity it needs enterprise inventiveness creative football Patera has brought it to this town kickoff Matthews and Whittington are deep for the Oakland Raiders with 21 seconds remaining on the clock <laughs> Herrera a little pumped up and he promptly kicks it out of bounds and that <laughs> means they'll back it up five yards he'll do it all over again he, did, he didn't like that unfair advantage they'd given him five yard penalty and he said I want to move it back up where it's supposed to be and I'll show you how to kick from there Let's make a quick point right here and now. Jack Patera, who's an old dear friend of yours because he was with you when Dallas was an expansion team of Franks because he was with the Giants. That man, his contract is up this year. There's been some talk among some about the incredible coach of the Washington Husky Huskies, James, who is a marvelous, marvelous coach as he proved again last Saturday. But forget it, Jack Patera and his own women fancy and within the very next few weeks or at most a couple of months January sign a oh. new long term contract as the if, coach of the Seattle. If you Seahawks. don't get him in too much trouble. <laughs> no way. He deserves it. Yeah. To kick again. This time they have backed it up to the 35. They had kicked from the 40 prior time. Herrera making sure this one doesn't go out of bounds. This is Ira Matthews. He can sting you. And Matthews out to the 30-yard line. Terry Renneker there to make the stop defensively for Seattle. Lots of fun when you watch the Seattle Seahawks play. <laughs> Talking about Jack Patera, we had a chance to visit with his wife Susan today at a luncheon 
Oh no. Here in Washington and Susan Washington. telling her that oh, it's their dad's birthday today and he'd like to have a victory. That of course Alton Bennett on his 77th birthday. That's awfully nice. You know they're also expecting their first grandbaby in uh, January she told us. So we could call him granddad. Bucket not having one of your scintillating exhibitions thus far. Van Egan touching the football getting out to the 32 yard line and time will expire here in the first half. Well it only took about two minutes of play to turn this crowd on. They had watched the ball move back and forth in the middle of the field and then all of a sudden the combination Zorn to Herrera and <laughs> Seattle's on top. We'll be back after this word from our local stations. I'm Live in the Seattle Kingdom, the halftime score, Seattle 7, Oakland nothing. Cheers for Efren Herrera, the pass receiver supreme. And our halftime features tonight will be bringing you some of the key plays of yesterday, some of the key highlights of yesterday as picked by ABC Sports, some of the key players, plus Dandy Don Meredith's talk with Dan Pastorini. Tonight's halftime features are being brought to you by Metropolitan Kingdom. The halftime score, Seattle 7, Oakland nothing. Cheers for Efren Herrera, the pass receiver supreme. And our halftime features tonight will be bringing you some of the key plays of yesterday, some of the key highlights of yesterday as picked by ABC Sports, some of the key players, plus Dandy Don Meredith's talk with Dan Pastorini. Tonight's halftime features are being brought to you by Metropolitan. Metropolitan really stands by you with insurance for your life, health, auto, home, and retirement. Really stands by. About having their great running back George Rogers for another three years. Of course, he is a senior, a strong candidate Heisman Award trophy. We'll see him in the Gator Bowl, Pittsburgh against South Carolina. I want to tell you something quickly, Frank. Hey, that got great bowl games. That'll be a confrontation between Rogers and Hugh Green, the brilliant defensive end, who's probably the best in the country playing for the Panthers. And then, of course, Missouri Purdue. That means another look at Mark Herman. Simply incredible. And you know about Herschel Walker by now. Let's get back to the second half. Yeah. Herrera to kick off. You had a look at Ira Matthews. He's dangerous back there, as is Arthur Whittington. Whittington put 90 yards for a TD last week against Cincinnati. Herrera punts it and is taken by Whittington. He's up ended immediately sprawling over the 25 out to the 27 yard line and let's take a look at the activities as they occurred in the first half. All right, you see how overwhelmingly Seattle it was. It was almost unbelievable to watch the paucity of the Oakland offense. Yards passing none. Yards rushing only 56. Seattle 220 to 56. Seattle totally dominant in possession of the football. Now let's see what this Oakland team is made of. First and ten. Oakland at their own 27-yard line. Kenny King and he runs into trouble over the right side. Bill Gregory was there along with Manu Tuiasasopo. Harry Dion defensively stays in the ball game for Seattle at left end. Jacob Green, if you were with us in the first half, their rookie sensation out with a knee injury. down 10. Jim Plunkett, 3 of 9 for 12 yards in the first half. Draw play. Kenny King and Kenny King picked up there nicely. Defensively, Michael Jackson, the second-year man out of the University of Washington. You remember three years ago against Michigan in the Rose Bowl? Key interception. That's it. That's what saved the game for Upset Washington. of Washington over Michigan. Third down and eight. Quick note, Frank. We showed the graphic. Three of nine for 12 yards for Plunkett. The 12 yards, of course, erased by Sachs. Thus, the no yards passing on the half. The 29 yard line. Oakland trailing 7 to nothing. Bucket. Here comes the pass rush. 
and Plunkett will go down back at the 23-yard line. The blitzing man, Joe Norman, who comes in against the pass, this time not dropping for coverage, but coming on the blitz. That kid, Joe Norman, whom you just saw make that tackle. All right, Don, pick this up. Well, they had it. See, nobody blocked him. Norman came up. They tried to move out and get him from an offensive guard situation. It didn't work. He made a good move. He's a good active linebacker, Joe Norman is. Second He's a good year. athlete. He could have yeah. played Major League Baseball. Yeah, for the Phillies, they said, wait a minute, they got a third baseman over there named Smith. Yeah, he I found out it was football. Mike Schmidt, so he <laughs> said, I'll try football. <laughs> Great guy to punch. You're looking at Will Lewis. All things going according to the way Seattle would like them to go. Seattle will have great field position. The great guy booms a long kick that drives Lewis all the way back to his 20-yard line. Good move by Lewis. And Ray Guy does his thing. Yeah. And a flag goes down as Jeff Barnes takes Will Lewis at the 29-yard line. You know, I'd like to see this again. I don't know if we can, but they're calling this a late hit. I think it was a good call, Howard. That was, uh, they had him down in there. That's where they really try to protect the injuries, and I think it's good. I think it's Mario Salato that, that came in, if I'm not mistaken, number 52. Good move by Lewis to make, get past that first one. You see, he's pretty well down right there, and then here comes the hit, and that's what they're trying to get away from. And I think it's a good call. That's Mario All Salato. right. Personal foul piling on. First down. You say it's a good call, I accept it. Thank you very much. No man has ever studied the rules more fully, learned them more accurately than you. That was a 60-yard right. punt by Ray Guy. The penalty, however, gives the Seahawks the ball just inside their own 44-yard line. Again, they lead by seven. Zorn, play action. Large it, wide open. Nifty moves, and he's got a blocker in front of him. And Lodgett struggling down close to the 35-yard line. First down, Seattle. And this team is playing with an absolute intensity now, and they're beginning just the right way, going right to the attack. All he does, you see that guy with a little slow move off the line, just kind of moved into the open position. He doesn't do much of anything except get open and catch the ball. Isn't that amazing? Love the way he slipped Mike Davis's tackle. Number 36. There he is, originally drafted by Houston, but his coach, Jerry Rome, came to Seattle, and they traded for Houston in Seattle's first year, and he has been spectacular, leading Seattle in receiving for all four years. Steve Largent on first and ten. And banging through is Dan Dorney. The fact that he was originally drafted, Frank, by Houston is another part of this intriguing Rome Largent story because Jerry Rome was originally drafted by Houston and Sonny Werblin traded, no, it was originally, Sonny Werblin traded the draft rights to Jerry Rome to Houston. That's the story for Joe Willie Namath. I knew it was in there somewhere, but he wound up playing for Dallas. A gain of four by Dornick, second down six, ball at the 31 yard line. Joe Dad piled up at the 30-yard line, gain of a yard. It'll be third down and four. Randy McClanahan in defensively. There's our hero. You can forget about Lynn Swan, the perfect wide receiver who played so brilliantly yesterday. The man now is Herrera. <laughs> third down four, the four wide receiver offense in. Joe Dott, 43, single setback. Argent, Rabel, Green, and McCollum. The wide receiver offensive set for Seattle. They have an unusual set for him. Jodat, flag is down, and Jodat struggling for a first down, or at least the yardage for a first down, but again, that flag is down. You got John Matuzak, I believe, got offsides. And it will be first down, Seattle. Either that or another illegal formation thing against Seattle. But I think you're right. Nope. On Tuesday. Joe Dett. Tom Flores moving down to the 25-yard line. You know, Flores threw six touchdown passes, which stick, uh, is still an Oakland Raider record against Houston. He came out of press. Encroachment refused. First down. There you go. Flores is the kind of guy, he was at Fresno City College, went to the, what was the Dillsday COP, 
broke all of or a lot of Eddie LeBaron records. Now it's University of Pacific. Been in and out a little bit, played in Calgary, came back, doing a good job as a head coach in there. Bill yes, Lynn. he is. Yes, sir. First and ten Seattle. They lead seven to nothing here in the third quarter. Godas. It's a block from Dorney. Steps inside and gets good yardage inside the 20 down around the 19. Good block by Dornick out in front of Joe Dad, and Joe Dad read it beautifully. Frankie hit it. He made good move as Joe Dad came through and doing a pretty good job on Matuzak. He doesn't know where they're going in there. That was a little jump move coming across some of his own guys. Was finally brought down by Burgess Owens, number 44. Jim Joe Dad. He really does like it up here. He says, "I've got a whole new lease on my football life." Up of seven, it'll be second down and three. The ball at the 18 yard line. McCullough up at the top of your screen, wide receiver for Seattle. Darn. Going for McCullough. Drills him perfectly right in front of Lester Hayes. Oh, that was beautiful. That's passing the way Sid Gilman loves it. You go out in that 14 to 17 yard range, you come back a couple of yards, perfect timing pass, hit. Well, that's true, and he's working on a guy named Lester Hayes out of Houston, Texas. For, who's all pro. And see, Hayes has terrific position on him. And that ball was well thrown, and the point you made is to come back to the ball. That's what McCullum did. A lot of receivers don't do that. They cut that thing off, go to the sideline, which really cuts down that angle from the quarterback standpoint. Good route. First down, close to the 10-yard line. McCullum is split left. That's Largent now, top of his game. Largent in motion. And off. Uh, Dorning stacked up at the eight yard line. I, I'm sorry, Frank. I love that Jim Zorn. Did you see the way he handed that ball off? <laughs> I love Matuzak coming in and says, You fooled me the time before. You didn't get me that time, fella. So I'm coming in and I'm gonna, I'll stay awake. Out of Cal Poly at Pomona, originally with the Dallas Cowboys. They cut him loose in 75. He was floating around in 75. Many think that he was floating around down with the Rams. But that's another story. And then he was signed <laughs> the first year. He ought to tell that story. story. The Seattle Seahawks. The Cowboys really wanted to keep him. They yeah. had Steve DeBerg then, too. Well, they actually had an injury, and they brought Preston Pearson in and had to get rid of somebody, and Zorn was the guy that left. Second down and eight. Zorn quickly reads it to Dornick. Touchdown. Dornick picking it up and instantly picking up Dornick for the six. That was the first really good drive we've seen all night by either team. Frank, I think he hit it. He got a blitz from the outside. That was Ted Hendricks, number 83, that came in. If Ted Hendricks had not blitzed, this would be his man, Dan Dorning. So since he did, nobody was there to cover Dan. You can live by the blitz, and you often die by the blitz. I've heard that. It's also true. Herrera, conversion, and Seattle out on top, 14 to nothing. Keep in mind, in three of the five games Seattle has lost here in the kingdom this year, they have led going into the fourth quarter. It's not over. From the genius of Dotson. Dotson 810 Maxima, a luxury sedan of sheer brilliance. Touch the outside, the inside lights up. She can scan stereo in digital. This is the first car that speaks to you. Please turn off your lights. Thanks, Maxima. We are driven. Maxima, the new Datsun for the luxury-minded who long to be Datsun driven. There once was a man named Linus who needed a muffler from Midas. When lo and behold, his shocks broke in a hole. And then as fate would have it, his brakes had had it. Then Linus needed more than a muffler from Midas. But he didn't despair. He knew brakes and shocks were there at a price that would be more than fair. The moral of this story is easy to recognize. For mufflers, brakes, and shocks, it pays to midas -ize. Seattle moving down the field as Don Minton, one of the sustained drives we've seen tonight. Oakland has really been staggering tonight. Surprisingly so, they're on a five-game winning streak. Included in those five wins were victories over San Diego, over the Pittsburgh Steelers, 
And they're down 14 to nothing with 8.52 remaining in the third quarter. Herrera will kick off. Ira Matthews and Art Whittington deep. And the victory over the Seattle team in Oakland, 33-14. Herrera, this time, bangs it into the end zone, taken by Ira Matthews. Now, Matthews met severely at the 17-yard line by Terry Rinnaker. Gets out to about the 18, and now we'll see if Oakland can generate something a little more than these drives that they have had thus far tonight. Well, that represents their futility tonight. I don't think I have ever seen an Oakland team so futile on offense, and yet there are the five consecutive victories, the great play by Plunkett, which has not manifested itself tonight. Maybe Roselle is right. Anybody can beat anybody on any given day. Well, we know one thing, Pete wouldn't lie to us. Actually, it was Burt Bell who said that. No, but Pete adopted it. First and ten. Bucket. Cliff Branch tries to get back in front of defender Keith Simpson. He could not do so incomplete. Cliff Branch. He's been around for a while. Simpson was back there. You look at Plunkett. Cliff Branch is one of those guys that was one of the real speedsters that came in. Actually, the first Texas high school athlete to ever run a 9300. Now that's been a few years ago, but Cliff still is the kind of guy that brings in that blazing speed. He is having a tremendous year, Don. Yeah, came out of Houston, goes to Colorado, comes in here. He's, he's been around for a number of years, but he does have that deep threat that you've got to respect. Second down, 10. That's Branch again, top of your screen. Bucket. King and King. Oh, that's nice. Bounces off. Dave Brown gets to the outside, out of bounds at the 24-yard line. They'll mark it at the 23. You see the ferocity of the way this fired-up Seattle team is hitting. And I'll tell you flatly, I'm not a pass quarterback, but Plunkett made a mistake. When? He picked the wrong receiver. He had on a this man play? open. Yes, on this play, a man open right. Look, in the middle there. Number 30. Well, of course, Kenny's open, too. And I think, you know, when you go to Van Egan, Van Egan has been there for a while, but you really want to try to get the ball to Kenny Keene because he does have that speed we've been talking about. Except that he was double covered. There were a free safety Third was there down. to help out. Third down, six. Three wide receivers in for Oakland. Pressure on Plunkett, and he has to turn it loose, and he does so to Arthur Whittington. Whittington will be short of the first down. Bill Cook defensively was pressuring Plunkett. And the Seattle defender is slow to get up. Now, on his feet, number 55, Michael Jackson, and the crowd roars their approval for their defensive unit. I've been very impressed with the Seattle defense, which I was told and led to black. Actually, look at the stats. They haven't really been that effective all year, but they certainly are aggressive. I'll say that. They've been hitting a lot. They've been 12th in their conference through 10 games. And doing a good job tonight, though, Shake. They are. Ray guy to hit. Will Lewis settles in, and he settles in way back, <laughs> close to his 25-yard line. Lots of respect for Ray Guy. Ray Guy, he'll run it out, and he'll get the first yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. Turnabout is not uh -huh. uh -huh. Ray Guy out of bounds. He is all the way down to the 49-yard line of Seattle, and he shocked everyone. We but told you earlier this guy is the third straight quarterback. He's a great athlete. Look at it again, Don. Well, Howard, look at I me. Mean, this guy doesn't run like a kicker, doesn't run like a quarterback. He runs like a heck of a good athlete that can pick him up and put him down. He is a good athlete. He sure is. <laughs> and I think this was designed all the way along. He was trying to get a little fake to the inside to get to the outside. <laughs> so he said, look, we saw Herrera in the first half. Let me show you something here in the second half. I got some moves, too. Now it's a football game. Bucket on first down. Wide open Chandler. Oh, yeah. And Bucket picks out Chandler, and Chandler gets inside the 20-yard line of Seattle. Very good throw, too. Flag goes down. Late hit. Must be against Michael Jackson. He's the guy that's doing the tunnel. Yeah, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is really exercised. He's going to get a personal foul. See if we can pick up what the personal foul was. They're calling it on uh, Michael Jackson. 
Who? Defense, 55. Personal foul, first down. Well, if, if he's going to do it, he didn't do it very badly, but they're still calling it before getting in there late. Well, I thought it was a perfectly proper call. I said, now we'll see what Oakland is made of, and it was Seattle who scored. Now we'll see what Oakland is made of. Frank told it like it was. The game is far from over. I think that was a questionable call myself. Very definitely. He'll throw the football, Whittington will. If he can get behind this pickup here, we'll score. He's got it. Look out. Touchdown. Arthur Whittington was going out on the option to the right. Circled back. It was almost like he was running on a punt. Picked up a picket line of blockers into the end zone. Well, the folks in Quero, Texas will be happy tonight. And so will the old ponies of SMU. Now, they've worked on this play for weeks at a time. It's <laughs> called a fake halfback option pass. Go to the right, stop, and run back to the left. What a weird game. Yeah, Tanner threw a really strong block right there to break him. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting the scoring we expected in the beginning. <laughs> Go get him, Arthur. Chris Barr on for the conversion. And Oakland is on the scoreboard. They're racing there. Zero. 7.03 remaining in the third quarter as the youngster from SMU has <laughs> Oakland on the scoreboard. We'll be back. 14 to 7. Chris Barr to kick. Deep is Jesse Green. And Jesse Green will take it one yard in the end zone. And now Oakland appears to be fired up. Ray Guy running out of punt formation for a 24-yard pickup. Plunkett promptly hit Bob Chandler across the middle for another first down, a roughing penalty, and Arthur Whittington turned the corner, saw nothing going for the option pass, went back to the left into the end zone, and the Oakland Raiders are within seven. How much of the Ray Guy run, in your view, Frank, was done by design? His ability to read the defense? I think that's how he determines whether he's going to go or not. On first and ten, Zorn gets the screen off to the tight end, John Sawyer. That was set up nicely. Sawyer pulling ahead about a yard short of a first down. Mike Davis tripping him up. Pass to it. Sawyer's had a good year for Seattle. He missed all of last season with a hamstring pull. <laughs> he was with the Oilers. You'll remember he was with the Oilers, the kid from Baker, Louisiana. <laughs> all of a sudden, the Oilers have other tight ends and a two tight end offense, and this kid's found the home here. Is it Baker, Louisiana, or Mississippi? Where's he for? Louisiana. Louisiana. Second down, less than a yard. Is Joe Dad. Joe Dad has the first down after the 30 yard line. Jim Joe Dad having a big night on the ground for Seattle. That's really a plus for an offensive unit when you can pick up eight or nine yards on a pass to be able to come back and let that offensive line say, look, we've got to have two, three yards. Let's go to the first down. Give it to a guy like Joe Dad and let him push it out. That's, that's awfully nice. That's how you keep those drives going. You don't have to depend that much on the pass. First and 10, 30 yard line, 530 remaining in the third quarter. Steve Larch at top of your screen, wide receiver for Jim Zorn. And Jodet drives it up the middle again, gets a couple, it'll be second down and eight. Seattle with a four and six record. They still do not, however, feel they're out of the AFC Western race, probably because so many of these Divisional teams will meet in divisional games. Frank, you and I were watching the Jack Patera show, and he explained that to the audience. He had it here. all worked out. Yeah, it's like the Seahawks have to play Oakland, they have to play San Diego, they have to play Denver, and he says, now, you know, really, all those statistics, if we beat all these people, they also have to play Dallas, that we can still win it. So he has it all figured out statistically. It still works. Second down and eight. We saw the futility of the offense for Seattle in the late going of games right like after a moment ago. Good out. Makes a good move to the inside and gets another first down out over the 40-yard line. Misty piece of running by Jim Jodak. 
That's just a play. I really believe they're not going to run that often. I think they're running it specifically against this defense because they found a hole there. They're split very wide. They got Jodat uh, set out in a fairly wide halfback position. They just hand it off to him straight away. Look at the split in this line. Matuzak goes to the inside, holes in there. So they're giving it to Jodat. You've got a one-on-one -on -one block on Rod Martin, and he let that running back, Jodak, take his hole. He's going to pick up some yardage. Seattle being urged on by the partisan crowd. Some 64,000 here in the Kingdom of Seattle. to John Sawyer and they're going to say incomplete. Did you see Cedric Hartman on the sideline pick up the fumble and start toward the goal? <laughs> and a boy Cedric. <laughs> hey, hey. That of course the reference to the proposed Attempted move by the Oakland Raiders to Los Angeles. The Raiders have fallen off in attendance for the first time in 11 years. They've not been sold out. IRA fans of course in Oakland. There's even a threat of a demonstration for our Monday night game that we have there December 1st between Denver and Oakland. Fans calling for some of the fans to stay out of the stadium the first five minutes of that game. Second down 10. Darn. Hey, ball. Comes down with it. That's when you know you got it going. It's like last week on the tip pass to Mike Barber. You know what it reminds me of? When I see him throw with his left hand, it reminds me of the things that, you know, the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. Now, this must mean, of course, that left-handed people are the only ones in their right mind. <laughs> no, that's the way Jerry Rome called the play. <laughs> Those left-handed folks are the only ones in their right mind. <laughs> Trying to get it larger, and he missed him. Bounced up in the air. It actually hit right. That's Dwight Osteen there. Bounced up in the air. And fortunately for Seattle, he had Steve Rabel there in position. First and 10, the ball at the 39-yard line of Oakland. And Joe Dad runs into a pack of trouble over the left side. Ball is bobbled. They're saying, no, he was down. Ted Hendricks was in there initially. And Ted Hendricks, well, he is, just reads these plays so beautifully. Stepped across the line of scrimmage. Turn Joe Dat back to the inside, and there is an injured Seattle Seahawk at the midfield. Frank, it's a very similar defensive play we saw in the first half by Ted Hendricks when they came in there, just not blocking that play. That's a situation that I think when the plays come in from the sideline, this is where it can limit the quarterback a little bit. That play comes in. I don't think he's as likely to change that play as if he had called a play in a huddle and comes up and sees that defense. He missed that defense, and uh, there's Bob Uecker again. Dan Dorning, the injured Seattle Seahawk, will be back in a moment. The University of Washington in the evenings. Teammates, meanwhile, second down and 12. The ball at the 36-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. 14 to 7. The Seahawks over Oakland. Dorning, a lot of time, and he passes to... Rabel right over the middle. Zorn had to use all of his six foot two to be able to get that ball over the on rushing Oakland Raiders. Rabel had good position that time on Mike Davis on the inside. Mike couldn't do much but come over his shoulder and make the tackle. But Rabel worked his way inside, got between the defensive man and the quarterback, and it was drilled in there very effectively. Close to the first down, and we'll have a measurement. We've talked a lot as we await the measurement about Lodgett, about McCollum, but how about Rabel, Don? Well, Rabel is doing well, but, you know, he really they got a first down there. He missed a couple of passes earlier in the ball game that I thought should have been caught. One of them was a little bit wide. Then one of them hit him right in the middle. So he's the kind of guy, fifth year, as you see from Georgia Tech, who's a good defense, I mean, a good offensive uh, receiver. But he doesn't have that consistent eye hand coordination that a guy like Largent does. <laughs> he, had, he had the big one on the deflection. Well, you know, I had to think about that. Maybe he does come to think about it. Ball inside the 29-yard line. First down and 10. McCullum adjusts at the bottom of your screen. And Larry oh. Vinson, who has replaced Dorney, piles ahead for a couple of yards. It'll be second and eight, and we are, have been informed that Dorney uh, suffered a possible hit pointer. Mm. Look at those stats. Time of possession. 
Oakland has, relatively speaking, been without the football. And they're only seven points down. That's right. Saw a good shot that play before with Matt Millen, the young quarterback we've spoken of earlier tonight. He really is an enthusiastic fella coming in there from linebacker position, number 55. Ball at the 27-yard line, Mark there, so we'll call it second down and nine. Four-man front for the Raiders. This is Brinson. And the former Cowboys. It's inside the 21-yard line. Nifty gain by Brinson of about seven. Taken there by Rod Martin. Short of the first down by a couple. Big down. And Jack Patera knows it. Big down. Going to be a granddaddy in January. I think that's terrific. He was with the original expansion team down there in Dallas. Played middle linebacker. Had a knee injury that first year. Actually, one of the... Woo, that was my introduction. When I saw him get his knee hurt. That was a tough one. And that thing really hurt. Third down, a long two. Ball right at the 21 yard line. Jodak struggles close to a first down in the arms of Mike Davis. He didn't get it. Oh, he got a good placement by the official. I think it's still a little bit short, though, Howard. I think you're right. He didn't get it. It'll be fourth down. And the measurement has been called for, but I do believe he is a few inches short of the first down. And Jack Patera saying, hey, how much? They'll get a chance to think it over, make their decision while the yardsticks come out. Well, Frank, I don't think Jack can pull any tricks this time because he can solidify this game with a field goal. Or close to do that. Four seconds left in the quarter. They'll start the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Herrera is now coaching. <laughs> well, when you're hot, you're hot. <laughs> Wants to know if he wants to square out or a zig in. <laughs> <laughs> and they will not. Now they will have more time as that is the end of the third quarter. The score 14 to 7 Seattle. We'll return for the fourth quarter in just a moment. Stay with us. <laughs> Those are the numbers on the year for Efren Herrera. 16 of 23. <laughs> he came to Southern California when he was 16 years old out of La Experiencia, Mexico, near Guadalajara, and attended La Fuente High School in La Fuente, California. That was it three years ago? He had to run in with Dallas management, and that's when he came to the Seattle Seahawks, and he's been a favorite ever since. Keep in mind, Zorn is the holder. We doubt if we'll see any trickery at this point as we begin the fourth quarter. Well, I said the time attempt. of four. Yes, sir. <laughs> and Herrera picks up a few more votes. <laughs> On the other hand, they may have wasted them as a wide receiver. <laughs> <laughs> Again, college football coming your way. 12 o'clock Eastern time. It'll be a doubleheader. The first game, of course, regional. Check your local listing for the game in your area. Michigan, Ohio State, the Rose Bowl on the line. Oklahoma, Nebraska, the Orange Bowl on the line. Yale at Harvard, a lot of pride and a lot of prestige. A win by Yale, and they win the Ivy League. And then game number two, a long time meeting between two rivals, USC and UCLA. The Trojans of USC battle the UCLA Bruins in one of college football's great old rivalries. And again, I'd like to remind all of you that the Yale-Harvard game, for those of you planning to attend that game, it will begin at 12.35. I wish I could be there, Frank. I'm worried about Harvard. They've got their quarterback back. There are the third quarter stats. And still, Seattle retains its dominance, though Oakland briefly did explode for a touchdown. The score, 17 to 7. Total yardage, no comparison. Yards passing, and that's the key to the game. It has not been an effective night for Jim Plunkett. Again, we'll remind you, three of the five games Seattle has lost here in the kingdom this year, they have led in the fourth quarter. Deep, Ira Matthews, 43, Art Puddington, who returned 190 yards a week ago against Cincinnati. And Herrera will kick off. A lot of air time. Yes, sir. Well, he's actually, that's meditation. No, he knows when we're in a close-up. Ira 
do is we'll bring it out. And Matthews dancing down the sideline, stays in bounds out to the 27 yard line. Boy, you see some hard licks on those kick return teams, don't you? Those guys coming down full speed, they just bang each other around. Thankfully, I never was a good enough athlete to make those teams. Few no shows tonight. The television blackout lift, lift, lifted in the northeastern, northwestern area. I'll get it all out in a moment. It was the northeast and the northwest. 60,480, however, have turned out. They have been bowed in support of their Seattle Seahawks. First and ten. Bucket on first down to the air. Bucket going for Branch. And Dave Brown comes up with an interception, his sixth of the season. Of course, Dave Brown, one of only three players on Seattle from the veteran allocation in 76. He started every game Seattle's ever played. Don't know, don't care how fast Cliff Branch is. He didn't beat Dave Brown. The ball was thrown a long way, but Cliff Branch was never open. Brown had him all the way, had good position inside, made a good interception. Seattle will have the football when we come back at their own 28-yard line. Jim Pluckett on the bench being reassured. Everything's going to be all right. We have plenty of time. We'll get it back for you, but it was a pass that, forget it, ill-advisedly thrown. Dave Brown, great position on Branch all the way. Seattle comes up with the football first and 10, their own 28-yard line. 14-38 remaining in this game. Larger in motion. Play action by Zorn. Zorn going deep for McCullough. Good defensive play back there was Mike Davis, right with McCullum all the way. You want the key to this game, but get penalties that we've talked about. They have not sacked Jim Zorn tonight. When Oakland crushed Seattle in Oakland, they sacked him five times. McCullum, I think, thought he was interfered with by Dwayne Osteen. Let's see if we can see it. I don't think he was. Dwayne was going for the ball. Both of them playing the ball. Yeah, yep. exactly right. Sure did. Kind of an unusual call both times. We saw Plunkett come out on a first down and go deep. He was intercepted. Zorn comes right back, goes back with a similar sort of pass, trying to get deep. Incomplete. That'll give you an idea of Jerry Rome's philosophy of football. Don't sit on it. 17 to 7 lead. Let's go out and get more. Jerry Rome, of course, calling the plays that are signaled in to Jim Zorn. I accuse Rome of doing that because he did get to call his own plays in Dallas. Second down, 10. Larry Brinson. And Brinson to the 33 yard line. Gain of about five. It'll be third down and five. You saw Hendricks defensively once again with Matt Millen. Frank, you called Plunkett's interception by Brown an ill advised pass, and you put it too gently. Dave Brown is <laughs> well, you did because Dave Brown has missed the stability in that defensive secondary and he's proved it never missing a game since he joined Seattle. He had been a first round draft choice of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They found no place from there because they were loaded with people with Seattle. He's played up to the reason he was drafted first. Raiders up tight defensively on third down and five. Torrance trying to change things off. He'll have to use a time. Time has expired and quickly before it does, Zorn calls timeout. So Zorn will drop over to the sidelines, chat with Jack Patera, have a word on the phone, perhaps with Jerry Rome once again. 1342 remaining in the game. Jim Zorn, who was sacked, as we've said, five times in the previous Oakland game. Threw five interceptions a week ago, under fire up here, and they love this boy. And I'll tell you, he is really a quite a kid. He's really got his heart into the community and active in so many charitable events. And one of them, of course, is SIDS SIDS. And that, of course, sudden infant death syndrome. And he's been very active in it. And I bring that up because this Saturday night, Howard will be in Baltimore for the University of Maryland, the Baltimore Convention Center, where they are putting on quite an affair, not only to bring people aware of what SIDS is all about, sudden infant death syndrome, but also to get people aware that something can be done. More money should be brought in for research. And this man right here, very active in the northwest part of the United States, Jim Zorn. There's Dan Pastorini again. And thank you for mentioning that, Frank, because Jim Zorn and 
all of the people like him in the world are so terribly important to us. There's no way, no way anyone can ever get over the death of a child. Third down five. Ball of Seattle's 33-yard line. Oakland moves up tight again defensively. Here comes the blitz. And Zorn is sacked for the first time tonight at the 26-yard line. And the big time to do it. They picked a good time. They actually moved that whole offensive line back there to set up where Zorn was. The, I guess the charge would be led by Matuzak. He was the guy that had Zorn around the ankle. And he got one of the help from his friends. Willie Jones also in there, the second-year man out of Florida State. Thunderfoot Weaver. Ira Matthews is deep for the Oakland Raiders. And Matthews would like to get a good run back here, get Oakland in good field position. They have been tentative tonight, but they can strike very quickly, as we have seen in the past five victories over the past five weeks. It comes Matthews. And Matthews to the 37-yard line. 46-yard punt by Herman Weaver. Hustling down there, Ron Essink. 13 minutes remaining in this game, and Seattle will be back in a moment. Sony introduces the art of what... On first down, this is Kenny King. And King, chased out of bounds by the pursuing defense. He might have got a half a yard. Michael Jackson with that great speed and mobility sliding out there to force King out of bounds. Kenny King, coveted by the Raiders in the draft two years ago, but they didn't have a third-round draft pick, went to Houston in this past offseason. The Raiders finally came up with Kenny King when they sent Jack Tatum and a pair of seventh-round draft picks to the Houston Oilers, who had only run Kenny King three times last year. He's over 600 yards thus far this year for Oakland. Second and ten. Bucket. Oh, hesitates, and Manu Tuyasasopo was there defensively. There will be a yard loss. Manu really did close in there. That was good pursuit by, I'm going to try to say it. No, I don't think I will. Manu Tui Asasopo. Manu Tui Asasopo. First round draft pick a year ago from UCLA, and, and along with Robert Hardy, a 10th round draft pick, they have started every game. Last year, and this their 11th start of this season. Third down 12. Ball marked inside the 35-yard line. Seahawks coming to life. Good protection. Bucket. Trying to go to Chandler. Incomplete. Good pressure that time, Frank. By Robert Hardy, number 75. And Monty was again in the area. Put good pressure. Jim just tried to force that ball. Threw it off the line. And forces a fourth down. Listen to this crowd. This adulation for a team that's four and six on the season. Will Lewis has dropped deep to await the kicker Bray Guy, and I mean Lewis is very deep. And Guy bangs off another beauty. Lewis inside his own 20. Good coverage by the Raiders, and Lewis gets out to the 21-yard line. A 48-yard punt thus far on Ray Guy, who has been having a tremendous night for Oakland. We'll be back in a moment. He won the competition, which was a surprise to everybody, I think, except the Jennings. He said, I knew he had it all the way. Second and seven. Two tight ends are in. 81 is Sawyer, 82 is Mark Bell. Zorn puts it up in the air. And incomplete intended for Sawyer. Sawyer picked up, covered by Burgess Owens, also dropping deep. Another one of those big downs, Frank. 
Seattle must keep possession of the ball if Oakland is not to have at least an opportunity to get back into the game. The Kingdom shot the top of the ceiling some 250 feet above the playing surface. As I said earlier, not a lot of frills, but certainly a very practical facility. And it does rain up here occasionally. Third down, seven. Zorn directing traffic. And off is to McCutcheon. <laughs> That's almost one of those things. He's kidding me. Tell the guy where to line up. Look, and I'm gonna give you the ball, and you go run straight ahead. That's almost a trick. Is there something I said? <laughs> Fourth down, and Seattle will have to turn it over. Out comes Herman Weaver. Didn't think they'd do that. Well, they're surprising us tonight, aren't they? There is Ira Matthews. You know, said has really not lived up to his great college senior year when he averaged. Almost seven yards on punt returns for Wisconsin, leading the nation. Weaver, and he's in trouble. And it's blocked. There you go. It was Ted Hendricks who made the block. And there's a scramble in the end zone. No. They lucked it's out a safety. The safety. They got away with the safety as deep as Seattle could get away. It looked like it was going to be six, but there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Well, they did luck out. Because that could have been a touchdown very easily. They really did. And once again, the big play, Ted Hendricks. Ineligible receiver, downfield, on the punt, refuse, safety. Two points racked up for the Oakland Raiders, and they'll get the football back on the free kick from the 20. Well, now, it was not a bad snap. You think he's trying to play games? He saw Ray Guy do his number, Herrera do his number. It was Lester Hayes pressuring Weaver and Ted Hendricks with the block. And I don't have the exact numbers, but Hendricks over the years has probably blocked more punts and field goals than any other active linebacker in the game today. I think actually he has, Frank. I don't have the numbers either, but it seems like I read that somewhere. And at six foot seven, you're not going to be too surprised because he does have the long arms to get up there and do it. Tell you another thing about him, he's played in 169 consecutive games. Durable, a brilliant diagnostician on the field. He's been all over the field tonight, and having just another superb year for Oakland. He was a defensive end at the University of Miami in Florida. Baltimore drafted him, translated him into a linebacker. He was the defensive player of the year when the Baltimore Colts won the Super Bowl 16 to 13 over the Dallas Cowboys. He is a great veteran. He's got a nose for the football. He's got a reach that goes to the sky. He makes the big plays. Six foot seven. Ted Hendricks went off to Green Bay for a couple of years before coming to Oakland in 75. And Herman Weaver will put it into play from his own 20 yard line. Ira Matthews and Keith Moody have dropped for the Oakland Raiders. Well, it had to happen. We have all, all had all kinds of action on fourth down here tonight. And this one backfires against Seattle. That flag is down as the Seattle Seahawks appeared to be offside. Keith Moody. Again, the flag is down back at the 20-yard line. the ball until they can talk it over and see whether or not Oakland would like to try another run back and I'm sure they will Frank as we look back at that play I think Hendricks would have had the football for a touchdown kicking team offside five yard penalty break kick. but just at that moment a Seattle body came hurtling in and that moved the football Away wasn't that number 86 back in the game? Uh, it could well have been. Happy birthday, Thunderfoot! <laughs> I just thought it was Jacob Green back in the game at the most precisely right moment. <laughs> 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 I would say that's true tonight. I like you? that. Yeah, it's not a job; it's an adventure. Herman Weaver now will kick. This time he has to get it off 
inside the 15 yard line. Again, deep, Keith Moody and Ira Matthews. And 18 remaining in the game. Score is now 17 to 9. The Seahawks. Keith Moody. We've got some open. And Moody spins his way out over the 40 yard line. Hopefully, once again, good field position. And a touchdown, however, will not do it. Had they been able to recover that football in the end zone, it would have been a little different story, at least in terms of offensive strategy for the Oakland Raiders. You've got to think that's an omen of some sort since we've mentioned several times tonight Oakland has lost several games this year in the last quarter and they have not won here in the kingdom all year. Seattle. What did I say? Oh. Well, well they've never won here. Hit the chance. First down. Bucket to the air on first. Going for Ramsey his fingertips. I think Bucket thought that was a well-thrown ball. And it did look well thrown. It seemed to me that when Ramsey was running, he just somehow misjudged it a little bit. Didn't get his hands up there. You can see Plunkett back there. He got good protection this time. Set. Made a good throw. You know, we have seen a little oh, bit overthrown. Uh, looking for down on the bench. Raymond Chester appears to be all right. And he has seen very little action here in the second half. That's a good point. I don't understand that. He, of course, did a great year a year ago. They kept him, sent Casper to Houston, and he's out of the game. Flags are down. Bucket just bombing away. This time it's complete, and that's Derek Ramsey. And he's got himself almost a touchdown. They will not take that offside. Oh, they sure won't. And now you see in action why they traded David Casper. As great as David is, they've got Chester, they've got Ramsey, they believe in young Todd Christensen. All the times you see this happen, the defense knows they've committed a foul, they know there's going to be a penalty, there's just a slight hesitation. The ball is well thrown, but man, he is wide open down there. Who in the world is supposed to cover him? It's certainly not going to be that linebacker, that's Michael Jackson. It's not going to be Jackson that's going to cover him all the way. Or maybe it is. If it is, Jackson sure could keep up with it. Oftentimes, double coverage on both outside men will result in a linebacker trying to go all the way with the tight end. But Derek Ramsey, we talked about him earlier, has very fine speed, as does the other tight end, Raymond Chester. Got ourselves a football game. And Egan. I think even the second effort got it for him. Only thing you can save him down here is a fumble. And Tom Floyd says just punch it in. Don't fumble. 9.30 and the clock is moving. Remaining in the game. Jim Puckett. Not having a good night, but staying in there. Keeps hammering away and finally got Ramsey to the one. Van Egan. No. No. Crowd will go bananas over this. Thought he was going to bounce out to the outside and score. Good defensive play from that defensive left side. You can almost see Van Egan. Who are those guys? Less than nine minutes left now. The clock begins to work. 17 to 9. Seahawks in the lead. Three setbacks in now. Kenny King. Van Egan and Derek Jensen. That's Jensen Hill or just into a wingback spot. They should go right. Touchdown. Yep. Van Egan. And the Raiders get in from the one on their third effort. A conversion away from a one-point lead now. And Seattle and they Seattle fans have seen this so often. To a great start. The game it looked like they could almost run away with, and now all of a sudden they're in a dogfight. One gets the feeling that if all games were 55 minutes, Seattle would predominate in the entire league. Once the late Rocky Marciano told me, Don, if all fights were 50 rounds, watch this. 
Chris Barr brings it to within one. And we have 8.30 remaining in the game. We'll be back. Denver is breathing down them with a 6-5 record. Kansas City at 5-6. Seattle thinks that if they can win tonight and win the rest of their games, that they'll be in the hunt. Jesse Green for Seattle. And Green spinning out to the 20-yard line. Todd Christensen, another tight end who does a lot of things for the Oakland Raiders down there on the stop. Jesse Green, another Tulsa X. A fellow out of Dallas, Texas. Got a lot of speed. It was Jesse Green who knocked the football away from Hendricks and prevented the touchdown. In the meantime, I was saying the late Rocky Marciano once told me that if all fights were 50 rounds, George Shavala would have been the greatest fighter ever lived. <laughs> First down, 10 Seattle. Slim one point margin. Torn. Lawrence McCutcheon comes up with the ball. Good catch. That was behind him. He had to spin around and get it, and he gets out over the 35, close to the 37, beating Rod Martin. I'm going to guess there was a, a Rod Martin. Let's take another look at it. You see McCutcheon coming from his fullback position out to that flat. It's kind of an unusual pattern. Usually those backs are set over the halfback position. It was a little bit behind it. Number 53, Rod Martin was the guy that came back to try to make that. Was that Keith Moody, I think, was in there also. I don't like ladies. Seattle. Out Lawrence McCutcheon on waivers from Denver three weeks ago. First and ten, the clock stopped at 8.14 remaining in the game. Zorn rifles it out to Largen. And Zorn very carefully had to thread that ball to Largen because the looming hulk of Ted Hendricks was right there. He really was, wasn't he, Frank? He was right in the middle, and Lester Hayes had him pretty well covered from the outside. The ball was perfectly thrown. Take another look at it. Quick little fake to McCutcheon in the middle. Sets, looks downfield, comes back to the outside. There's Hendricks, the 83. Hayes, number 37, and Largent was in the middle to pick up that reception. Yeah, but don't you have to admire the audacity of Rome's signal calling? Nothing defensive in the play of the Seattle team. They certainly moved the ball well tonight. They just haven't put up a whole lot of points. First and 10, 47 yard line for Seattle. This is McCutcheon and McCutcheon to the 48-yard line. Again, a four, it'll be second and six. And we want to remind you tonight, right after your late local news, ABC News Nightline explores a murder trial in which an all-white jury in Greensboro, North Carolina, today found four members of the Ku Klux Klan and two members of the American Nazi Party not guilty of murder and rioting charges resulting from the deaths of five members of the Communist Party over a year ago. Nightline looks at the lengthiest murder trial in North Carolina history immediately following your late local news over most of these ABC stations. Second down six. Here comes Larry Benson. And Seattle showing a lot of style. They come roaring back. Benson to the 28-yard line. First down Seattle. Burgess Owens made the stop. And if Burgess Owens hasn't been there, Benson could have gone all the way. You see a little cutback against the green. Matuzak was late getting there. Good move to the outside. There's Owens, number 44. Brings it in. He had a good head of steam, Larry Brinson. Well, yeah, and a former cowboy, and he was with the Cowboys for three years and only had run for 172 yards during those three years. They've already got field goal position. Argent in motion on first down. Brinson again, holding on to that football. As he gets back close to the line of scrimmage, he might lose a half a yard. Good move by Rod Martin that time, number 53, coming into the lineback position. He was playing over a block of the left tackle, number 72, Lewis Bullard, but he uh, at least slowed him down so he could get some help from his friends on the inside. Seattle has now had 39 rushing plays. Every time... They have had 40 rushing plays in a game. This is their history. They have won the football game. Second down, a little more than 10 to go for the first, and the seconds are ticking off the clock. We're inside five and a half minutes remaining. The handoff to McCutcheon tries to slip through. A simple play where they pull the guard and hope that the tackle will follow him. He did not. <laughs> Ted Hendricks 
slid over to make the stop. A gain of a couple. It'll be third down and nine. It's a fairly interesting statistic you're talking about that, Howard. They've won every game in which they've rushed 40 times or gained 200 yards rushing. Third down and about nine, maybe a little more than nine. Lawrence McCutcheon single setback, four wide receivers for Seattle. And Oakland has tended to blitz on this situation. And here they come. Jarn picked off Lester Hayes. His ninth interception of the year. Lester. That ball was deflected, I believe, and Hayes was there. But it was the one mistake, Frank, that Seattle could not afford. It's what they've been doing in the late minutes of every game because now a field goal can win it for Oakland. He did get the blitz, and here's the thing he's been criticized most for. I don't think he saw Lester Hayes out of Houston and Texas A&M. I think he didn't see him coming from the other side. Hendricks could have touched it a little bit. I thought outside. he oh, did. Maybe he did. I'll tell you one thing, Lester Hayes, the kind of season he's had, and that's his 16th interception in less than two years. He is right up there with the best in football today. 39-yard line. The Oakland Raiders down by one. 4.20 remaining in the game. First down. Inside handoff. Mark Van Egan piled up line of scrimmage, and the crowd is exhorting the defensive unit. Well, now the one thing Plunkett can't afford is a mistake. That's Robert Hardy, defensive tackle. Let's go back and look at that play and see if Hendricks got a paw on it. I thought he did. Well, it's hard to tell. But no matter if he did touch it a little bit. Yes, yep, he did. Did touch it a little bit. However, I think had Hayes not been there, it could have been complete. Hayes just happened to be in a position to come through from defensive standpoint to pick that one off. If Oakland should win, I give the game ball to Ted Hendricks. Hardy got off the field limping. Defensively, Bill Cook was in there for Hardy. Second down, 10. Puckett wants to go to the air. Eric Ramsey was down there dueling with Kerry Justin incomplete. That's Lester Hayes. I don't understand that call, Don. You don't need that kind of yardage. All I have to do is get the field goal position. Well, you can think, you know, back a little while ago, though, Howard, when we were sitting in here and he, he comes to Derek Ramsey down the middle of that deep goal. I think the thing that Plunkett does have, and this is supposedly with the reason behind getting past Trini, he wanted that real oh, strong long ball. Yeah, and Plunkett can throw a pretty long ball. Third down, 10. Less than four minutes remaining in the game. Oakland has the football, their own 39-yard line. They need to pick up the first down. Awfully big play right here. Rocket can run for it. Oh. He slips, drops the ball. Oakland, I believe, is there, but it'll be short of the first down. Oh, yeah, yeah, but they got to go for it, Giffer. They got to go for it. You hate to see Plunkett drop the ball. He had the opening and probably had a first down. That's right. Now, it's almost embarrassing. I hate to see quarterbacks do that. You know, he doesn't speak well of the trade. Nor did he get good <laughs> placement from the officials on the football. So they got a couple of yards to go. A little more than a couple, and it'll be fourth down. He just stumbled, fumbled, put and then fell out there. They this say. is what you call your basic character builder, this play. <laughs> Showtime right here in the kingdom. Three. Seconds ticking away. Three minutes remaining in the game. Roll out. Bucket. First down. He got it. And he held it. He said, I learned something on that last run. He tucked the ball in a little closer to you. That was a character builder, wasn't it? He had fumbled three times during the course of the game. Now, as the seconds tick off, two minutes and 30 seconds, Oakland has three timeouts remaining. They also have a very strong-legged place kicker in Chris Barr. He had two over 50 yards last year with Cincinnati, so he can reach it if you get the ball inside the 40. First and 10. 
Plunkett, Branch, stepping out of bounds, killing the clock, and also picking up eight yards and doing so. Clock stop, 2.08. And we're going to quickly pause five seconds if you can quickly pause five seconds and allow your stations to identify yourselves. You're watching KOMO TV for Seattle. Cliff Branch, his first reception of the night with a gain of eight yards as Oakland moves inexorably closer to field goal range for Chris Barr. Oakland down by one. Again, a win tonight. And they stay one game ahead of the San Diego Chargers in the AFC West. Block it. Fires a dangerous pass out to Bob Chandler. Covering was Curry Justin. Chandler has been kind of a new threat for them. He's a guy that's kind of come back home to the Bay Area. He's a student at a law school, high school. You, he just ate Seattle up individually in the first game they played, and Seattle, or rather, Oakland beat them down in Oakland. He had three touchdown passes in that game. He didn't have to pass on that play. He's got enough time. He only needs a yard for the first down. He could have run for the first down. Heading towards a two-minute warning. 204 remaining in the game. Rams in motion. Whittington gets to the outside. Kills the clock at the 36-yard line. That's what I mean. First and we'll down. get the two-minute warning. After watching Bradshaw with Swan yesterday and the way they used the clock. Oakland has all the time in the world. They just don't have to make a mistake. We'll be back in a moment. Now, four-wheel drive gives you the luxury to go anywhere. Four by four by Datsun. Introducing the 1981 Datsun King Cab. Off-road, its new Napsi engine gives you more power than last year. And with exclusive reclining buckets, optional jump seats, and a sporty five-speed stick, this King Cab takes on the city in high style. It's probably no surprise that most automobile accidents are caused by careless drivers. A reckless few who push up man sweats more than a woman. That's why a man needs the story. It was not an artistic success for the Oakland Raiders, and of course it's not over. 56 seconds remain on the clock, and Seattle will have one timeout to work with. Deep is Jesse Green. But it's the kind of a game that a super football team will win when they're playing poorly. Jesse Green at the 17-yard line. Keith Moody hustling down there for the Oakland Raiders. And now, let's see what Jim Dorn can come up with for the Seattle Seahawks. Well, let and me he say... He has come up with a lot of things over his short term in the NFL. Excuse me, Frank. You just made a statement that is the whole story if Oakland hangs on to win. Because you prove yourself a good team when you win, when you play poorly. And that's the way the score stands now, and Oakland has not played its game. We, of course, will see Oakland again, December the 1st, in Oakland against Denver. Lawrence McCutcheon, the single setback, and of course, the four wide receivers are in. McCutcheon, he'll try to get out of side. And a flag goes down as McCutcheon steps out of bounds at the 25-yard line. They're going to call clipping, I think, that time. It seems so, didn't it? Yeah, I think so. They think got Sam McCullum that time, it looked like. That's a good point, Frank. I think it's the mark of any champion. We saw Pittsburgh do it yesterday against Cleveland. We're seeing Oakland come back. They did not play well. Statistically, they've really lost this game, but they are ahead of the score. And we saw a mistake right there that's going to throw them back. You also, another thing, on that kickoff return, you see a team come down. Any, anytime you can hold a team inside the 20. Here's a clip by McCullum. Oh. <laughs> it, it was not a hard clip, I will say that. <laughs> so the guy... He might have had his uh, head close to his pocket where the yellow flag was. But Personal anyway. foul clipping, number 86. Sure, it's First easy time. for you to say. That was an in uh -huh. intended to clip. Yeah, that's right. Intent. First down, 16. 46 seconds. Darn. A lot of time. McCutcheon. 
dribbles it at the 15 incomplete. Well, you go back to Zorn's interception to Lester Hayes. Uh, possibly it was tipped key by mistake. Hendricks, and it was a key mistake. One of the things that Jim is coming under a great deal of criticism here. He had five interceptions a week ago. He had gone four games without any. You see a quarterback and you measure his success after he's been in the league for a while. And I think by his ratio of number of interceptions to touchdown passes, he does not have as many touchdowns as he does interceptions. Which is a telling statistic. I think it is. It really is. Neither does Plunkett, as a matter of fact. Second down, 16. Look out. Martin was the intended receiver. It was deflected, I believe, by Rod Martin. Almost taken there on the interception by Burgess Owens. Third down, 16. I got to tell you, Don, if we have to go down there and select who gets the game ball, I go for Hendricks. I, yeah, you mentioned that earlier. I think possibly you would have given it to him had he won or had he lost. We well, might have to he, go for yeah. Ted Hendricks every week. But he, he really is. He's Frank. like three people out there. He's the kind of guy that really does seem to make the big play in a lot of different ways. He was also the guy that blocked the punt. That's right. Third down, 16. Burgess Owens is way back at the 40-yard line. Playing center field. Oh. Oh. will go down. John Matuzak pulling in there along with Cedric Hartman. And, of course, Willie Jones, the sack pack, if you will. And they've got Zorn all the way back at the two-yard line. And these Seahawks and have fourth down. Yet to win one here in the kingdom. Apparently so. 32 seconds left. One timeout left. Fourth down and 20. Let's see. No, more than that. Fourth down and almost 26. Yeah. See there? <laughs> That's well, what you say. this is where you let the quarterback call his own play. That's right. Pull it out, Jim. And almost picked off out there by Lester Hayes. And that should do it. Eight seconds. So it is over, and we have found out. And the clock is stopped on change of possession, so we'll have to have another play run on the field. Well, we found out what Oakland's made of, Mr. Gifford. I've said it. Ever since we saw them, actually, I saw them on television when they beat up on San Diego in Oakland, and all of a sudden this team with uh, people from, well, left field, if you will, all of a sudden came together as a cohesive group, and they're going to be tough to head. Well, they really did not play a good football game, but they won it, and I think that's a real key, too, because they are going to play better than this as you go down the line. Here they are again, still on top of the AFC West. One game ahead of San Diego. Well, what a disappointment, too, for, for Jack Patera. He's under fire up here a little bit, and I think unrightfully so. This is only the fourth year of this franchise, and he has the best expansion, or the fifth year of the franchise. He has the best expansion record ever in the league. Young team. And he's a solid coach. Sure is. Derek Jensen in motion. Whittington. Heads for the end zone. And that will be it. And the Oakland Raiders come from well back to defeat the Seattle Seahawks 19 to 17. And the Oakland Raiders have now won six straight. Seattle has lost four straight. We'll be back. Band at one time, they're pointing out blockers. Will Lewis excites the crowd as he takes it back down to the 32-yard line of the Seahawks, put it into play. First and 10, Seahawks 11-29 to go in this game. They're up by four. David Craig, the quarterback, handoff into the line of scrimmage, and flags come down like Monday wash as Tony Benjamin carried but got hung up at the line of scrimmage for not very much in the way of yardage and the flags will have to take a look and see buddy curry who's playing a lot of linebacker matter of fact he's playing ahead of tony dakin tonight the veteran out of georgia tech 
Georgia Tech, where have I heard that? <laughs> oh, yeah. D. Sims. Hey, Wayne, you know, we was talking about special team and speaking about Will Lewis. That just goes to show you the more things that you can do, the better your chances are of making this team. That's right. He's playing defensive back, and he's running back punts. It's looking good. Same way with Cornell. Cornell is a valuable player on special teams, and he's shown it. Roberts' rules of order look like they're in force as the referees meet at the 30-yard line. Face mask, number 69 on the defense. Dale. Face mask violation. Oh, <laughs> They're going to replay the down again. That's the second time in a few minutes. Face mask against one team, something against the Seahawks. I thought it was motion. And so they're going to replay the down again. That's the second time we've seen it. So it'll be first and 10 still on the 32. Going along with what David said, making a football team is one of two things. You're a super athlete, you're a super catcher, you're a super runner, a great blocker, or you can do a lot of things well. And you throw, you throw football, the more things you can do is better. Up, we got three penalty flags come down as Craig started the play. So we had a little motion, a little offside from somewhere. So things getting a little sloppy, but you get a mixture of rookies and veterans in after only, uh, say, three weeks of camp, and you're going to get some mistakes like that. Now we'll see what this call will be. I think that's on Papa Fig, Bob Newton. Think it's on Fig? Yes. Papa Fig got mad the other day. Illegal motion, number 78, the offense, refused, second down. Good call, gentlemen. It was Bob Newton who stormed out of camp. Um, you know, and just last week, I think it was Sunday, he got mad at for a few minutes at uh, Howard Mudd, and, and it's all straightened out now. And Howard said, I respect Bob, and Bob says, I respect Howard, and I was just mad, wanted to be alone. And Bob's had a tough time in rehabilitation. 